Astronauts to the moon. Ignition sequence start. Three, two, one. Houston, we have a problem. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. We got to on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. What you're seeing here is a mirage. Mirage. It's not a mirage. I promise you, it's not a mirage. It is the buildings across Lake Michigan in Chicago. That's what it is. And hopefully my sound is okay. I'm going to check in with you guys, make sure that everything is on the up and up. But let's talk about tonight's show, shall we? I think we shall. Should be a good one. Looking forward to it. Ready to go. It is episode number 28 of the Journalism Late Night Show. It was supposed to be on Friday. Then it was supposed to be on Saturday. And we've had some bad weather here and had the internet go in and out. And so it got pushed till Sunday night. And what better than Sunday, 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 DVDs, $5, Xbox, $6. Uh, if, maybe you don't live in an area where we've had that. We have the Cow Palace here in the Bay Area where they have uh, I don't know, some sort of get together, some little swap meets or something. Who knows? Let's check in with the chat and just make sure that you guys can hear me okay. And then we'll get it going, get it on, and let's pop out the chat. There we go. Thank you very much for that. Very kind of you. Uh, what do we got here? How's the sound? Somebody give me a five by. I would appreciate it. Good morning, Rune. We've got I am Ian's cat. Says sounds good. Of course, sounds great. My voice is uh, basically heavenly. Uh, do you ever have an open panel on YouTube every Thursday? Well, it used to be every Thursday, and then nobody ever was showing up. So it's the first Thursday of every month. That means that the next one will be. Let me check the calendario. The next speakers corner will be on March the what? March the seventh. Okay, well, that's stuff. Uh, it's the latest that show will ever be, March the 7th. Uh, thank you very much. Matthew Garvin says it sounds great. Thank you. Cole Styles in the house. Bobby C., what up? Thank you for being a member. It's good. Thank you, Hooked. Chat is marvelous. Chat is marvelous. Great. Lowry in the house. Lowry. Yeah, it's late, but you're on the East Coast. That's why. So move to the West Coast and stop crying. All right. That's good. Good job. All right. So we've got a fun show for us this evening, uh, a topic that I very much enjoy but we're going to actually break it down into intricate, intricate detail, intricate, intricate, uh, to find out what is going on in the world. Wait, wait, this, this is, uh, huh. Okay. I, um, uh, kind of shocked. What, why is that the background? It's not the journalism show background. Am I on the right account? Huh? Okay. I guess so. Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're not going to complain about it. That's what you're not going to do. Uh, let's check out the sponsors, shall we? We couldn't do it without them. What's going on here? Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. And let's start out with JJ, CBDRub.com. Thank you very much for being a sponsor, JJ. JJ Hempcrete Bear, if you don't know him. He is a great guy. He just sent me some uh, bath bombs, some CBD rub, which is nice. My wife uses it. I use it on my lower back every once in a while when I need it. And Seems to help that or I just miraculously heal myself when I touch myself. One or the other. I'm not really sure. And uh, so, yeah. And then, oh, you want me to show those off? I'll do that next time, JJ. Show off the uh, the the bomb CBD. No, no, no. I'm sorry. The bomb hemp. I had to actually ask this guy questions. That's how dumb I am. I'm like, what, what do you, what's the difference between hemp? Can I, you can smoke? It's the same thing. <laughs> I had no idea. No idea. Uh, so anyway, go to JJ's CBDRub.com. It's JJSCBDRub.com. He has this all grown in his own farm. Here you go. Look at him here looking all uh, surrounded by weeds. Imagine that. And then he creates this bomb uh, all himself with his family there. And that's what I think we should be supporting is small businesses uh, of people that are like-minded. That's the way we're going to move forward and uh, stop giving money to these ultra corporations who care nothing about you, believe it or not. Well, they care about your data, but they don't care about you. Uh, let me fix the screen here. It's pissing me off right now. Let me see why we are not looking great. What, what is going on here with the, well, it's because I scrolled down. It still doesn't fit really in the square there. We're just going to fix this for a second and then let's see. There we go. Let's fix that so we can actually see the whole site before we actually go to our second because I don't want to piss Mike off. And he will call me and be like, dude, you didn't have a, you didn't have me on the full screen. No, just kidding. He would never do that. But it would be funny if he did. All right, let's go to the next one. We got THC show dot live you can just click right here and go to the shop the merchandise where you can get some very cool stuff and again a small business owned by one of the people with like minds what do you know and uh get yourself a thc hoodie he sent me a very dope uh hoodie that says the earth is flat like this one is there the hoodie on here oh there it is glows in the dark it's freaking cool you guys gotta check that out uh you can get 10 percent off here by using jaren 420 
J-E-R-A-N-420. Get yourself 10% off. Get this uh, cool backpack. You can put anything you want on it. You can say, uh, I love Jews. It could be written on the back. Just you know, parade through town. People love you. Give you high fives and stuff. So that's uh, probably my plans with it. And lastly, we've got Tinfoil Hat Factory. Definitely check them out. Good people over there. Uh, and they do have some, I don't know how you find it in here, but they have some uh, EMF blocking materials. I don't know where that would be, though. Um, but come on. I mean, you know, any, any site that has uh, the Earth is flat, NASA lies on the front page, gets my business. Uh, fact, Earth is not a globe. I mean, look at that. That's great stuff. Good stuff. So definitely check them out. Good prices here. And where is that featured products? Maybe they don't have it anymore. Let me see. Did it have an EMF blocking tinfoil hat? Uh, there it is, EMF. There we go. All right. So, yeah, so they've got these EMF blocking hats. And, you know, one thing I think is important is to recognize that there's always these waves of light, if you will, radio waves, uh, passing through your skull at all times. Think of every radio station that's picked up in your city right now. That's all traveling through your head as we speak. Okay, it's not like they jump over your house and go to like a car and turn the corner and miss you. Or something. No, they're just running through everything. They're just nailing you in the cabeza, which is uh, never fun. Never fun. At least it's not those photons, though. Those photons, they'll get you right in the eye. Boom, blind. Blind quickly. And I believe that that is it for the... Wait, what do I have here? Oh, yeah, THC, the other one. All right, that is it for the awesome... Um, Oh, I do have to show you something real quick. Let me show you this funny thing. And you're going to hate me for showing you this, but it's, you know, tough, tough skis, tough skis, shit skis. Well, first I should tell you that I have a new song coming out. Very excited about it. Um, I know most people are, hate my parodies, but I like them very much. I like to write them and I like to kind of think of them and put them together. And so I was watching Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And there's the great scene with uh, Bill, the candy shop owner, right? Who sings the song, uh, the candy man can't. And so I'm just kind of humming the song in my head. The can, you know, and I kind of started. The NASA man can. The NASA man can do anything if you think about it. And then I started to pick up lines that would work well with uh, the NASA man can. And then all of a sudden it just kind of came together. And of course I don't like to. Well, I like to sing. I'm just terrible, and people tell me not to. Thanks a lot, jerks. But uh, I reached out to conspiracy music guru. I said I have an idea. I don't know if you like it. Here's my lyrics. Here's my idea. What do you think? And he's like, Yeah, I'm in. So uh, the song is done. But uh, the video is in progress. But I'll play you just a smidgen of it, uh, just so you can get an idea. And the whole song is great. It's longer than the original. It's got several verses. But let's go ahead and just listen to a little bit. This is Conspiracy Music Guru, for the first time ever singing, The NASA Man Can, uh, from the Willy Wonka fame. Offer up their screw-ups with a murder. Maybe two. Or three or four. The NASA Man. The NASA Man The NASA Man Can. Man can. He can. The NASA man can, cause he lies, he cheats, he scams, but for our own good. Who can take the night sky, hmm. drape it in a lie? Who can do that? Only one person. Polish up some mirrors and say that they see back in time. The NASA man, the NASA man, the NASA man can. It's true. The NASA man can, cause he lies, he cheats, he scams, but for our own good. So what do you think? I think it's pretty good. I think it's going to be a good one. Uh, the video will be hilarious. Hilarious. Um, but Conspiracy Music Guru is just off the charts. Amazing. And he always comes through in the clutch uh, with just some... Um, and he's so quick. You know, I get it to him like the next morning. I mean, like given like 8 o'clock at night, I wake up the next morning. He's like, is this what you're thinking? Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Globies worship you, Jaren. Yeah, right. Well, they, they do spend enough time on me. Let's talk about that real quick, too. Uh, the song will crush. Wait till you hear the whole thing. It's got some great lines in it. Um, hilarious. Have you ever seen the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory in that scene? And I just saw it for the first time, and I, and now I can't unsee it. Did you know that the guy, he's opening the bill, is opening the bar, whatever you call it, to come out from behind the candy bar, and he nails some chick right in the chin. Have you seen it before? <laughs> I got to show it to you if you've never seen it. And like this little girl gets nailed in the chin, and they just keep going with the movie. And then even funnier, when I was looking for some pieces for my video, I came across the Tom and Jerry's uh, rendition of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And I was like, okay, what is going on here with this? And I was watching it, and I, I even thought to myself, like, there's no way they show that girl get hit. There's no way. 
Sure enough, they show the girl get hit. I couldn't believe it. I was like shocked. Let me show you. Let's go with, uh, what are we looking up? Uh, this is a Candyman can. Candyman can. Uh, Wonka. Yes, here we go. Has anybody seen that? Or is it just me? Oh, yeah, so Benny Boy's seen it. Uh, I can't play the song on the thing, but I'll move it to that. Just so you can see that scene, because it's hilarious. The girl just gets knocked in the jaw. And uh, there we go, right there. So let's bring this up. Move you over here. Move you over to here. Okay, so here we got the uh, Candyman old Bill here. Now watch this. You're going to be looking at this lower right-hand corner. He's going to open the bar and smack some chick right in the chin. Watch this. And dink! <laughs> and they just kept going with the movie. And dink! Did he even notice he hit her? Let's see. And dink! <laughs> Poor girl. <laughs> what an actor, though. What a professional. She kept going. She didn't even care. Look, let the scene must go on. The show must go on. Doesn't matter if you broke a chin. The show must continue. And then if you go to, um, what would that be? So Tom and Jerry, Tom and Jerry Wonka Candyman. I think what I saw was it was like the first 10 minutes of the movie. This one. So I'm watching this and I'm like, there's no way that they do that. And I had just seen the first time but when I was when I was making the video. It's like, there's no way they show that girl get hit. And sure enough, they do. And it's just a cartoon. <laughs> it's a cartoon. And they're going to show her. Here, it's in the next scene. Not right here. Oops. Now watch this girl come up and get nailed in the chin. Hilarious. Is this it? Where is it? I think it's right here. Let's see. Tom and Jerry. Oh, pull his whiskers. It's real nice of you. And I just thought it was funny. I was like, there's no way. And when it happened, I was like, wow. Is it right here? And it even makes a noise like, dink. <laughs> it's like, how did they write that in there? It's so funny. It's right after this. After they eat the uh, frogs, don't eat. I don't know which one's Tom and Jerry. That's how bad I am. I think it's right here. He comes out of the bar and nails the girl right in the chin. It's like this. <laughs> I th I, nobody had seen the scene. <laughs> Just nails her. Look at Dink. And, uh, and, uh, Dink. That is hilarious. It's really funny. Really good stuff. Anyway, that's what I've been working on is that. Video that's coming out soon. Also, we do need to look at real quick, just if you didn't get to see it, and maybe you are one of the people who lost your freaking minds, which is possible. Uh, prime time, ninety nine. Alex time, uh, ninety nine. Prime time, ninety nine. That what I put in? I don't know what his channel name is. Here we go. So uh, he had me on to debate the uh, space force commander. Oops, sorry, you're looking at the wrong thing here. There we go. Um, last Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday. Yeah, something like that. For episode number 150 and let me just say to you people out there relax relax it's absolutely it's kind of one of the reasons i'm even doing this show tonight or on this topic is because i think that the people who flip out and lose their mind i had to kick two people out of my chat on telegram because they actually watched that and then said jaron's a shill jaron's a shill it's clear he laid down for the cat i'm like you guys are pathetic you guys, I mean, to think that I've been doing this for nine years and then I'm going to, oh, now I'll throw in the towel here against this guy on Alex Stein's show. It's so dumb that you must worship. You must put your worship into flat earth. Like you think it's, oh man, it, it, you know, Jaron's doing this and the clandestine operations and shut up, shut up. And all I wanted to do, because I knew Alex Stein's show is impossible to get any time on. It's impossible. As I said, Alex, if I'm going to debate, I want a five minute or a three minute intro. Let me just give an intro because what I wanted to do is get a couple things out there and people d tend to find flat earth from that. Uh, and that's what I did. And then after that, he was just talking up a storm and I kind of liked that he was saying a lot of stuff about science being uh, incorrect. And for somebody who is a, who was in the space force, think about this space force. How, how can it be me standing there telling a guy from space force, you've never been to space. The 18,000 people, that are employed by Space Force have never been to space. Oh, you're a shill, Jaron. Oh, you're a sh you're so fucking dumb. It hurts. You're so dumb. I can't even understand how you can wake up in the morning and, and not kill yourself. I just don't understand because you're that dumb. And so, uh, just really embarrassing to see that. And again, I go. I have no like issue. Like I don't know what the problem is with me. I just don't worry about shit like that. It's the least of my worries. 
the least of my worries is, oh, uh, uh, somebody bombed on a debate against somebody on a know nothing channel that nobody's going to see. Oh, you're a shill. You know why? Because I'm not retarded. That's why. Because I have a brain. That's why. So anyway, it was uh, fun nonetheless. And he now wants to talk to Austin and I. So for all your, I guess Austin's a shill too. We're going to get together and have a shill fest with this guy. He is a whistleblower who got removed from the Space Force for having a problem with their woke agenda. Do some research. Wake up. Stop being little girls. Everything's going to be okay. Relax. Okay? There's no way that me d bombing on a debate is going to cost the flat earth something. Like, do you realize how dumb that is? Like, it's just so stupid to make, then go and make claim. I mean, do you realize how dumb you are to say that I'm a shill when I know that I'm not? So what do you think I think of you? You're a terrible researcher. I don't want you watching me. I don't want you anywhere near me. You can't, you have discernment of a frog. I don't even know where that came from. Do, do frogs have good discernment? I apologize to all frogs if they do. Um, but yes, this guy was uh, just, the things he was saying, we'll just go to a little bit here, just pick up a random spot. Science that's very much religious in nature. And so you and I probably have some commonality on things like uh, Big Bang cosmology, which I will challenge any day of the week, in fact. So, I mean, that's a huge thing. Shill, oh, you got the Space Force guy to say the Big Bang is, is uh, he'll challenge any day. How dumb are you? I hope you feel retarded. I hope you feel dumb. And then to be a nice guy, I kicked him out of my chat, and then I wrote to him privately and said, hey, just let you know why I kicked you out of my chats because you're losing your mind and they're calling me a shill. He's like, oh, and then if you're contacting me after you kicked me out of your group, you must you must have a, a, a superiority complex. I'm like, what are you talking I'm trying to be nice to you and tell you why I kicked you out of the group, but now, now you're blocked. Now you can just go away, and I don't have to deal with you ever, 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 ever again, ever, ever, again, ever. Please, ever. Don't want to do that. Um, but he had a lot of things to say. Uh, but but there are some other sides. And Alex, if you'll give me just 30 more seconds Go, here to, to give a serious. Yeah, thank you. Uh, 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 thought. Um, you know, some of the books I've got these globes stacked on. And by the way, I think you're having an impact in the world because I went to three stores looking for these globes before the show. And they don't. So another thing I wanted to say that is interesting. So people need to learn to tell the difference between. People saying Alex is not a flat earther. I talk to Alex all the time. Alex is a flat earther, dumbass. But what makes you say he's not? Because in one scene where he's with Gavin McGinnis in his first show ever, he was saying something about the moon landing and Gavin says, oh, are you a flat earther? And he kind of clammed up and said, well, no, I think there's some th weird things about it. And well, he did not. And he even told me, he's like, Jaron, I was nervous because that's a conversation that takes a long time. And so when he says that, if I would have said yes, I felt like the rest of the show would go that way. He was just getting started with the blaze. And we knew, Dave Weiss and I, knew that this guy wanted to be famous. We knew that. We knew that going into the Baby Truther show. And in fact, when we watched his show, Com Conspiracy Castle, the first couple episodes, Dave and I were just crapping, cra uh, we were just cracking up. And we both said, like, he's not going to be around very long. He's going to move up. He's going to get picked up by somebody. You could just, he's got that kind of guy. So for people to give Alex Stein any kind of shit for, again, if you want to give him shit because he's annoying, I'll give it to you. You want to give him shit because he's uh, outlandish and that he's goofy, and I'll give it to you. But to say he's not a flat earther is just ignorant. And to not understand some people have different aspirations. You know, like, I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be on the blaze. Okay? I don't have aspirations to be famous or to have my name in lights or anything like that. I don't have any of that. So if he does, more power to him. What are you going to do? And I think it's an interesting case to watch what he does. I think it's going to be very interesting. Does he, does he, we'll actually get to see, do people like that uh, adopt the beliefs of the channels that they're with, right? For instance, if he went to Fox News, does he start to pick up a Fox News and does he become exactly who they want him to be? Or does he actually stick to his guns? He's on um, Glenn Beck's show, Glenn or Glenn Beck's channel. Glenn Beck is a huge moon landing believer. Glenn Beck has, he purchased one of the spacecrafts that supposedly went to the moon. It's like sitting in there where Alex showed me one time, it's sitting in their warehouse. It's like, you got to come look at this thing. It's just like a big Mercury fucking spacecraft. That, and he goes on his show all the time and says that the moon landing didn't happen. So he is bucking the trend. He's taking his time. There was Flat Earth. I'm not going to name any names. There was people out there who said, oh, he'll never talk about Flat Earth on his show. He'll never talk about it. Never. And then now look at Now he's talked about it four, five, six, seven times. He asks every guest that's on, including Ramaswamy or whatever that guy's name was, and all these people, whether or not the Earth is flat. So 
if you can't recognize that you take the little wins, even if they're not huge, and you just get over it and stop being such a pussy, stop being such a baby about everything, it's okay. Relax. Not everybody is as worthless as you. Not everybody is as uh, afraid as you are. Okay. Some people have balls. Some people have testicles and they don't mind uh, being put out there. Like, I don't know. I mean, for me, it's just, I, I've never seen Alex do anything that makes me go like, oh, that I'm done with this guy forever. He's just, why? And to say he's not a flat earther is just ignorant. It means you don't even pay attention. You're just making things up in your head. So more power to you if that's what you want to do. But uh, don't bring it to my channel or chat because it's just ridiculous. And again, if, if, if that's what you're worried about, like, what's he going to do? Oh, he's not a flat earther, but he's going to sit there and pretend like he's going to bring it up, but he's not a flat. And then they're like, oh, he's going to make it look stupid. And I mean, everything about flat earth looks stupid. Hello, where have you been? We had somebody launch themselves in a fucking little rocket and die. You don't think that looked silly? Okay, there's a lot of silly shit going on. You cannot control other people. Stop trying to do it. Stop it. Nobody wants to live the life that you want them to live. Hate to tell you. Okay, nobody wants to live that life. Everybody needs to worry about themselves. That's it. Okay, and I want to show you one other thing. Uh, anyway, if you want to check that out, it's on Alex's channel uh, from um, five days ago. That's what it says. Anyway, go to Primetime with Alex Stein and uh, check him out. All right, so we've got... Okay. Uh, if you missed Globusters, Globusters was awesome. We had uh, Joel on, who is the creator, founder, whatever you want to call it, of uh, the wiki, the Flat Earth wiki. You go to trueearth.wikitide.org. And uh, there is your wiki. Yes, yeah, so it's a little hard to see, but you'll figure it out. <laughs> anyway, very cool uh, site where you can actually go and watch Globusters today, and he teaches you how to edit pages and how to contact him if you want to become an editor. Uh, anybody can edit. And we can just add things and, and create the library of Flat Earth Alexandria that will never burn for six months. We're not as shitty as the Library of Alexandria. We know how to put out fires considering we're next to the ocean. We just go over there and grab cups of water. Even if there's only two of us, we can grab a cup of water each once every four minutes, and we'll put out the fire before six months, I promise you. But uh, if you check out one of the cool pages, and there's the index page, which will take you to uh, FAQs, and then, you know, this is just ever-expanding. Click FAQs, and now you got why do flat earthers exist? Is everyone in on it? Is this a religious thing? Photos of Earth from space? Is it CGI or a photo? What, where does the sun go? What about Antarctica? Coriolis effect? Folk cult? Where is the edge? Circumnavigation? So this is a beginning of a great... Uh, I was going to call it a depository. Is that a depository? Okay. Uh, I'll give it to myself. And then you've also got uh, one cool thing where I think there's 230 creators. I'm trying to find where the creator button is. Here we go. 230 right now, content creator channels. You click that. It's all by alphabet. You can check out all these channels. Make sure you're subscribed to all of them. You got Bro Sanchez TV, Brian's Logic. You've got uh, Critical Inception, Celebrate Truth. So anyway, if you see one that's not on here, guess what? You get to come put it there. So there's you got uh, Effie Dave in the house, Flat Earth Debate, Flat Earth Films, Flat Earth Head. So lots of good stuff. Globusters in the house, uh, Good Times for All, Globuster Clips. There's a channel, Globuster Clips. What? Whose channel is that? Wow. I did not know that. Uh, I don't remember seeing this channel. 15 subscribers. All right. I see that looks like I've watched a video. Jaren isn't featuring Orphan Red, The Speed of the Sun. Oh, that's a great, I'm glad people do clips like that. That's a great clip. Uh, it's not just Globuster clips. This is from my show. I tried telling Dave Weiss, here's what I think you need to say. Here's what you need to tell people. Let's, very cool. Very cool. Thank you for doing that. Anyway, see, I, look what the Flat Earth uh, or the True Earth wiki did. It brought me to a new channel. So you've got uh, Hibbler Productions. Anyway, it goes on and on and on. Uh, Jaren, of course, Jaren isn't the greatest channel ever in existence of channels that ever existed in channels. Uh, and Nathan Oakley, worst channel ever existed in, in channels. Worst. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Nathan's channels, okay, if they would uh, stop being douches. All right, let's see. So anyway, that is the, we talked about that all show today, and then we had a nice conversation at the end of Globusters. And Joel was with us and showed us, and it was a fun show. So definitely check that out. And last but not least, oh, no, it was almost last. Wits it gets it is almost oh no he's not there's z's too zulu one peanut gallery in the house all right let's see now we're going to do you want to listen to one other thing 
this is what I said you're going to hate me for playing. But I, I saw it, and I had to listen to it, and I sent it to my wife. I said, well, you look at this. She's like, oh, my God, what is going on? I'm like, I don't know. I, I can't really explain people's issues uh, in the world. Hopefully you saw that. I don't know if I had it on the right screen. Excuse me. Um, where is this song? Okay, it's not there. Where is it? Where did it go? Let me find it for you. Hmm. I think that it's in my history, or did I do it from the garage? Oh my god, what is going on down here? What is this video? Moon Fakery, and then there's these guys that are like, with their shirts off in the ISS? <laughs> okay, I'm going to put that in the watch later. That seems like something I'm going to want to critique. What is these guys doing? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Space. Space is hilarious. Space is really funny. Uh... Let's see here. Where is my history? There we go. Let me see if it's in there. If not, I might have to check my phone and send it to myself. Did I? Oh, it is here. Oh, it's a boy. <laughs> so what I'm about to show you is a video that is uh, got 7.9 million views. Okay? I mean, this just shows, you know, talk about who you worship. Uh, if your kids are anywhere near seeing this kind of nonsense, I'm laughing at even just thinking about it. I mean, this is a... Random space song, okay? Now, don't leave yet. If you do have to go to the bathroom or you want to kill yourself, I would suggest you do that now. Before this, if you do it after, it's going to be a worse death. So this is called Space Race, Planet Song, Danny Go, Brain Break Dance Songs for Kids. Brain Break Dance Songs for Kids. So break, I mean, it is so freaking bad. We're not going to be able to get through the whole thing, I guarantee it. You're just going to laugh your ass off that somebody actually made this song, danced to it, put it out there, and people listen to it. How many? 7.9 million. Okay. This is hilarious. Oh, I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> shiver, shiver. <laughs> Who's dancing? Yeah. Like a retard? Like Don Pettit? Dance at retards? Like Don Pettit? When did they ever said seven rings? Anybody know that? I didn't ever know that. Learn something new every day. Saturn has seven rings. The rings, they're made of little tiny ice. You don't even understand how cool that is. They say they're 30 feet in width. 30 feet. And they're just, you don't understand how space works, guys. I mean, I'll explain it to you sometime. But basically, all these little rocks are perfectly in orbit of this rock. And they don't, they don't run into each other because if they did, it would destroy the whole thing, of course. And what I like best about the rocks is that they organize themselves by colors. I don't know if you noticed that. So, like, see here, the brown ones, they get in this, and then they brown orbits that, and it never gets out of line. No brown's going to ever go inside here. It doesn't work. Okay, gravity doesn't work that way. It's very color selective. You can see this is a beige and then the black. The black ring is pretty cool. So, I mean, there's no cooler planet than a big old fucking Saturn. Makes me wanna spin more than anything. Look at Saturn with seven rings. Makes me want to spin more than anything. Who is this guy? Who is the bear? Why is there a bear there? Wearing a, a suit like you should be locked up in a in some sort of an insane asylum. I mean, no wonder we're all fucking just, I mean, we were all indoctrinated with shit like this. We don't even remember as kids. Just spin, spinning. We're spin, spinning. We're spin, spinning. We were created by nothing. Wait, now, hold on. Is this really in outer space? How is he floating? Because the ISS has people floating in it, and that's proof of the space. So this is proof of also space. Make sure any flat earthers out there, you watch this. This guy's floating. Where do you think he's doing that? On Earth? <laughs> These fucking retards. He's in space, clearly. God, he kind of looks like that, uh, the guy that hangs out with the dead dog does the videos, Dave. Outer space, it's a perfect place to have a space. No, dude, wrong. Outer space is the worst place. To have any kind of race. Number one, there's nothing to breathe there. Whatever it is you call it. Space is fake. So fake space is a perfect place to have 
fake space. I mean, if you're this adult, kill yourself. Just saying. Just throw the radio in the bathwater and, and be like, oops, I was trying to listen to myself do this song and then I happened to slip. And died. By the way, this is the asteroid that the NASA landed on right here, if you didn't know that. They used that one. They landed on like this part here and then dug up a sample and they still can't get it open from last time I checked. This is so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It pays for a space race. Uh. All right. Let's oh, so. keep exploring. I can't listen anymore. Is there any more lines that are funny? There's Jupiter with giant storms. I mean, look at how indoctrinated. Giant storms. Oh, Jupiter has giant storms. Look at the storm. I mean, it's just, you know, is there a ground that you can go on and actually like, oh, no, there's no ground, Jaren. It's just, just gases. Oh, gases that are attracted to, don't they go out into space like every other gas that we know? Gas expands into space. No, Jaren, you don't understand. When gas gets so big, then it comes into each other. Like that makes any sense, right? Like we know we put a balloon up in the sky. It goes up, it expands, 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 and then the gas goes every direction, gone, into the vacuum of space. Okay. So then you tell me that, well, if you put a big enough balloon, it doesn't do that anymore. Oh, a bigger the balloon, the more it chooses not to go out into space? All right. Seems like that's a little bit counterintuitive. But the, their entire model is. That's what their entire model is. This is why you have to have people like McToon and FTFE who go around and just parrot the mainstream. It's because the idea of living on a ball in space. Think about it right now. We're on a ball in space <laughs> in a vacuum. Okay. And, oh, we need it to be a vacuum, though, Jeremy, because the Earth spins and flies through space. How fast does it go? 1.2 million miles per hour. That's 800 times faster than a speeding bullet. These motherfuckers want you to believe that. These losers want so badly for there to be no God that they've constructed a mathematical nonsensical model that includes you traveling right now as we speak 1.2 million miles per hour through nothing. Nothing. There's nothing in space. Oh, Jaron, that's not true. There's one molecule per every uh, cubic meter. Well, what's the rest of the cubic meter then? Oh, it's nothing? Okay. Pretty sure nothing doesn't exist because it's nothing. So you can't just have nothing. That exists now? Nothing exists? What is this, the never-ending story? It's the nothing. The nothing is coming. That, that, that's what the whole movie's about, is the vacuum of space is coming to get them. Swirl the clouds around with both your eyes. Swirl the clouds around with both your No, don't do that. Don't do that. They're not even clouds, first of all. And nobody's ever going to Jupiter because it's made of gas. Even in your old model. What the hell is going on? No, no, no. There's no. The rovers are in Devon Island, northern Canada. Okay, not on Mars. What kind of insane person do you have to believe that humanity can't get shit right here on Earth, but we sent remote control cars some 40 million miles away, and we're just controlling them every day? Drive around, drill rocks, and then they couldn't even come up with a design of their own. They had to go and use Johnny Five. You know, they had to get the Johnny Five. Johnny Five is alive, and he. I mean, this is the exact same robot head. Check out this head. Pay attention. See the head? See the head? Now let's go with the uh, Curiosity Rover. Curiosity Rover. And let's see if it's the exact same. Oh, it's the same thing. It's the same head. This is how un uh, just unimaginative these people are. Oh, where is this at? Testing the Curiosity Rover on Earth to, to go and do it on Earth. Have to oh. deal with all these... Just look how slow this is. Mars gravity creates the Earth's gravity. Oh, really? So we had to build a whole nother rover that weighs on Earth, but <laughs> Curiosity weighs on Mars. Oh, really? That makes a lot of sense. It's really fun to, like, every once in a while, kind of leave the office environment behind and come out to an environment like this. And Nerd alert. Mm, Nerd alert. He's a rover driver. What do you do for a living, sir? I'm a rover driver. Oh, really? Now, the rover that you drive, it immediately reacts to your controls? Well, no, see, because it's on Mars, and that's about a 25-minute round trip. So, basically, I tell it to go forward, and then I have to wait 25 minutes to find out if it did. And then if it did, then I tell it to make a right, and then I have to wait 25 minutes to find out if it did that. And then 
really my whole day's gone and then i just go to lunch and cool cool uh it's probably the least cool thing i've ever seen um and again the thing just cleans itself all the time it's you know it has dust all over it, and then the next day it's got no dust and it's amazing what mars does i saw recently did you see the mars eclipse let's go in there real quick mars eclipse of uh D- damos or something i mean look at the look at the work nasa's done how dare you say anything about nasa when we get footage like this okay let's watch it look at this look at the beauty look at the splendor this needs some music let me get some music over here this is not it's not ready for no music this needs music or else uh we can't listen to it how about this one yeah now we got it there we go that feels so good that feels right Mm. Look at that space rock. Wow. Wow. Good God, that's beautiful. Oh. Never seen anything so beautiful in my life. No, so there's actually people that think that it's cool, and those people obviously worship that. Um, <laughs> I mean, what is going on? I want to see the comments. Go back. What is this? Without this one rocket, the International Space Station... Stop it. Ed- stop, it stop it. This is something else. So interesting to see. We are so used to seeing circles in space. The odd potato shape of Phobos is eye-catching. It's eye-catching makes me realize how fortunate we earthlings are with our perfectly situated round moon and the incredible sight of the sun's corona made possible by a total eclipse. (sighs) All of the tiny Martians came out of their hiding places and bowed down, but the camera was like, I mean, people are just lost. Since Phobos and Diemos are not large enough to block out the sun to where you see the corona, wouldn't it be more of a transit than an eclipse? Oh, gee, it's so so intellectual right there. Oh, boy. I mean, just hilarious. This is a sight I never imagined seeing. To see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. <laughs> this guy's calling. Oh, boy. Pretty amazing footage. 1.5 AU from the sun, and the sunspots are crystal clear. Kudos, Team per- per- Perseverance. Wow. Wow. Um, oh, boy. Flyboy79. Talk about worshiping. Look at Flyboy had to say. He said, this might be. Is This This has to be a NASA clone or something that's going on. You cannot. <laughs> I cannot believe that this person is real. He said, this might be the most interesting thing I've ever seen in my life. I've seen more interesting things since watching that. That's how how uninteresting that was. I've seen more interesting things on the screen over here on the right side over here, you know, the upcoming videos. I see Howard Stern says the dark and disturbing downfall of Howard Stern. Like that's more exciting to me than what we just saw. Yet this person said it's the most exciting. Think about how much, I mean, got to be a virgin or else any girl naked, even if she's 380 pounds is going to be, uh, Definitely more interesting than that, than a potato radius thing flying by the freaking sun. What is wrong with people? I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, that is all that we have for uh, miscellaneous, I think. I can try one other check. I'll check one thing, make sure that I don't have anything I'm missing. We do have a lot of stuff stored up, but I do Stop it. I didn't do that. It was somebody else. Uh, But I want to check this and just make sure there's anything pertinent. That can wait. That's for tonight. That's for tonight. Uh, what is this? I want to know what this is. I want to see if I why is this Instagram. Why don't I remember pressing? Oh, is, this? this is so. Is this real? I I'm like this is hilarious. Now I got to show this. So I'm sorry. This is just. I saw. I was like, what is going on here? This is. Is this real? How do we get this to play? Where's the sound? Oh here. <laughs> 
And we're all here to tell you the real situation with the climate. No. So that you can understand once and for all. What? What? That's the situation humanity is in right now. No. It's never occurred. Oh, no. In the planet's entire history. Oh, you know about the planet's entire history? 4.54 billion years? Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what is going on? Look at these people. The planet is gone. It's gone. Because the little tiny humans, the little tiny humans that are like fleas, they've done so much damage. Again. <laughs> what is the hell is going on in this world? <laughs> this com is this Saturday Night Live? Is this Jackie Chan? <sighs> and we're all here to tell you the real situation with the climate. Mm. So that you can understand mm. once and for all. Mm. That's the situation humanity is in right now. It's so never bad. occurred. Never in the happened. Planet's entire history. Well, we know all the details of 4.54 billion years old. We know all that. It's too bad. Oh, boy. That's not forced or anything right there. That's just the true emotion, folks. You don't understand true emotion like that. You don't have the kind of heart these people have, all right? They care about the planet. None of you even give a shit. They realize we're in dire straits right now. Okay. So sad. Climate doesn't wait. Everyone, catastrophic changes are happening on Earth right now. Every person on this planet must know the truth and the true causes of climate change in order to survive, save themselves, their loved ones, and have a chance for a safe future. If you don't know this truth, write me in direct. What? In, write me in direct. Want to know, and I will send the detailed information. Oh, thank goodness. It's just amazing. Just amazing. A BS. <laughs> I want to know. Please tell us. We must know what's happening. Oh, look at all the climates happening. There's uh, Floods are happening, guys. Floods. Floods. It rained here today in California in February. Weird, huh? Rained. Water fell from the sky. Okay. There was like a flood down the street over there. All over across town, a little bit of a flood. I mean, unprecedented activities happening in the world that we need to really worry about because th this planet just is not suitable for humans. You know, we got to robots are what need to run this place. We need to have robots running it. They're smarter, AI is smarter. We just keep polluting. And I mean, we don't even give a shit. We're not crying like these people with actual hearts. We're just cold hearted people. I get it. I get it. I've got a cold heart. What are you going to do? Um, let's see what else we've got here. just want to make sure that's... What is that? Sorry, one more thing. Let me get to see what this is. I always put little interesting things here for us. Oh, I, I, I don't even know if this is real either. I never know. You can't tell. Billion dollars worth of minerals. That's about $1.4 billion for everybody on Earth. Mm -hmm. The thing is 140 miles across, made out of iron and nickel, mm. so it's not your average space junk. Mm. NASA will launch a probe in three months to try to visit the rock named mm. Psyche. Ooh, NASA Psyche. says it's not interested in space mining at this time, No, and it hopes the probe will instead tell us more about how planets are formed. Right. The best way to figure out how planets are formed is to go out into space. Look, it says NASA to visit 10, here we go, million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, quintillion. I mean, what is going on? The NASA man can. Uh, who can fly to asteroids uh, that are worth 10, quillion, qu 10 quintillion dollars? <laughs> oh, boy. I don't even know what is going on in this world anymore nasa to visit to, and they said but nasa's not interested and we're not interested in mining we don't want that money we're going for the progress of humanity so we can learn how planets are made because once we realize how planets are made think of what that does for ours think of all the good things that will come once we realize how planets are made isn't it just a collection of dirt that you say is not that what it is so i already know so let's save the money and not send that thing all right great it's fantastic nobody send it stupid it's retarded. But not if you're NASA. The NASA man can. They're the only ones who can. 
All right, let's get on with the main crux of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my opinion. It's not meant to be your opinion. It's fine. It may not, it may not float your boat. It may not be what you want to hear. That's what I'm good at, is just giving you my honest opinion. Now, again, listen to me carefully. It is my opinion, okay? Let me talk to two groups of people. First, Christians, you do not want to watch the show, okay? Please turn it off and go away. You don't want to watch tonight's show. Second group of people, Christians, you must watch this show. It's very important that you watch the show. Okay, I warned you to leave and not watch the show, but it's very important that you do. Okay, it's my opinion. It is, uh, as I see it, you are ch- free to choose whether you're like, ah, I agree with Jaron or nah, I don't agree with him. That's it. You don't need to go and cry. I'm not a shill. Go to my channel, f- c- complain, cry all day. You don't need to do any of that. You just need to sit back if you want to listen. Have a listen. See if it matches your worldview. We're going to get into some crazy stuff tonight. What if I told you that in the Bible, Jesus, because again, I have a different opinion of Jesus. I think Jesus came. I think Jesus said some things about the Old Testament God that these Jews did not want in there. And so they rewrote the Bible to make sure that they took all that stuff out. And so that Jesus looks like he's promoting the Old Testament God. You know, the line that says, uh, Pharisees, you liar, you know, whatever you are from your father, the liar or your father, the devil. Okay. The actual Greek translation is you are from the father of the devil. Yep. And like I said before, Jesus has said, no man has seen God's face or heard his voice. Yet Moses did, yet Abraham did, yet the Adam and Eve did. So clearly Jesus is not referring to the God of the Old Testament. That is a piece of shit God. It is a medium God. It's the Jews God. He's wicked. He's evil. He wants death. He wants blood. He wants sacrifice. It's not God. Stop paying worship to a demon. Wake up. It's all over the book. It's there for you to see. He promotes slavery. He promotes stoning people. The God that you call great, the God that you call wonderful, the God that you praise and glory and everything, ordered people to stone women to death. Think about that for a second. Stoning people throwing rocks at them until they die. Does that seem like a good good way to kill somebody? Again, we're going to go through that, but that's not the only thing. We're going to be talking about everything that you people, or you people, everything that people worship. We're going to go through a list of things, and we're going to realize that we shouldn't be worshiping any of those things. What does worship mean? We're going to get into all that. Anyway, it's my opinion, my show. It's the opposite of mainstream, the opposite of most everything you've ever heard in your life. This is the Jaronism Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it starts right now. Thank you for joining me. Why well, doesn't start right now? It starts now. There we go. There we go. No, no, it starts. There it starts. This, this is my take on what you thought you knew but don't know. Time, time to get your, time to get your mind blown. This is my take what you, what? what you thought you knew but don't know. Let the, let the time go. It's time, time. What you, what you, what you, what you, what you thought you knew but don't know. This is not mainstream. No. It's the opposite. So. It's my opinion. Oh. I got lots of hope. No. My eyes, my mind, my time. Let's go. My choice to not believe in people's lives. This is for my growth. Grow. This is for our souls. So. All locations yeah. and every time zone. So. Let the time go. It's time to get your mind blown. This is my take on what you thought you knew but don't know. Now what you know about the Jaronism show? What? What? Jaron, Jaron, Jaronism. Now what you know about the Jaronism show? What? 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 What, Jaron, what do you know about the Jaronism show? The answer is not enough. That's why I'm here. Let's get the chat on the screen as I'm going to be presenting, but I want to hang out with you guys. I want you to be able to comment. If I see comments that need uh, addressing, I'll address those. And if... Uh, it's negative. Oh, well, we'll just uh, address them and hopefully people can get through this. Okay. Now, I understand that when you question somebody's or you, uh, yeah, I guess question, when you point out the flaws in somebody's beliefs that they're never going to be like, Jaron's right, I'm wrong, I'll never believe. No, I understand that it's going to be down the road. Okay. So I don't expect to get a rousing response to this because uh, I just don't. But I'll tell you, that we can go to, even if we'll just start out there just real quick, it has nothing to do with the main, well, it has to do with the main topic, but God is just one of the things that people are paying worship to that they shouldn't, okay? I know you're like, what? How dare you? Well, remember that, what is worship? Worship is worth-ship, right? It's what you give attention to. What do you pay attention to? What do you find important? Where are you spending your money? Things like that. We're going to talk about why those are just not smart. And who you should be worshiping. I'll tell you tonight as well who you should be worshiping. But uh, let me go to, um, we're going to go to a Bible verse here. 
We're going to go to Judges 11 just to show you that you have a major problem if you're a Christian. Okay? Judges 11 is about the story of, uh, I don't know how to say his name, Jepapatha. Okay, we'll just call him Jepapatha. He's Jepapatha? Yes. He's the uh, the Galileadite, the, the Galileadite. Okay, he's the was a mighty warrior. His father was Gilead. His mother was a prostitute. Nice. Gilead's wife had also bore him sons, and they were grown up. They drove Jepapath away. You're not going to get my inheritance in our family, they said, because you are the son of another woman. So he fled from his brothers and settled in the land of Tom. Okay, so if you don't know about Jepapath, he wanted to be a great warrior on earth. He wanted to be in charge of Israel. He wanted to be a king. And um, let's see if we can find this spot that I want to talk about. So let's see. We're going to go up here. All right. He said, this is what Jepepethas says. Israel did not take the land of Moab and the land of the Amorites. But when they did come out of Egypt, Israel went through the wilderness and the Red Sea on to Kadesh. Then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom saying, give us permission to go through your country. But the king of Edom would not listen. They sent also the king of Moab, and he refused. So Israel stayed at Kadesh. Next, they traveled through the wilderness, skirted the lands of Edom and Moab, passed along the eastern side of the country of Moab, and camped on the other side of Ammon. They did not enter the territory of Moab, and the Ammon and the Armon was its border. Then Israel sent messengers to Shihon, Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who ruled in Hezbon, and said to him, Let us pass through your country to our own place. He, however, did not trust Israel to pass through his territory. Imagine that they didn't trust the Jews. Hmm. He mustered all his troops and encamped at Jahaz and fought with Israel. Then the Lord, the God of Israel, gave Sihon and his whole family, I'm sorry, and his whole army into Israel's hands, and they defeated them. Israel took over the land of the Amorites. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got the God of Israel, okay, is the one who gave the army into the hands of Israel. Okay, so God is responsible. He's the one who won this war for Jepipapaf and, and his friends. But um, if we go up here, we're going to find something a little bit strange. So let's just read from the beginning here. Uh, we read most of this part, and we said, uh, you're not going to get my inheritance. We read that because of art, you're a son of another woman. And he fled from his brothers and settled in the land of Tob, where the gang of scoundrels gathered around him and followed him. Sometime later, when the Amorites were fighting against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to the Jephapath from the land of Tob. Come, they said, come be our commander so we can fight the Amorites. Jephthah said to them, didn't you hate me and drive me away from my father's house? Why do you come to me now you're, when you're in trouble? The elders said to him, nevertheless, we are turning to you now. Come with us, fight the Amorites, and you will be the head over all of us who live in Gilead. He answered, suppose you take me back to fight the Amorites and the Lord gives them to me. Will I really be your head? So this guy really wants power. Right? Well, if, I, if I get the Lord to help me and we go take out that army, will I really be the head of this army? Will I be... The elders of Gilead replied, The Lord is our witness. We will certainly do as you say. So he went with the elders of Gilead and the people, made him head of commander over them, and he repeated all his words before the Lord in Mitzpah. So now he's asking for this area to be taken over. Uh, when he sent his, mess his messengers to the Amorite king with the question, What do you have against me that you have attacked my country? The king of the Amorites answered Jephaphat's messengers, When Israel came out of Egypt, they took away my land from the Armon to the Jabbok, all the way to the Jordan, now give it back peacefully. So again, now we've got the Jews taking land from somebody that didn't belong to them. And the guy's like, give it back. And he sent his messengers saying, uh, this is what Jephaphat says, Israel did not take the land of Moab and the land of the Amorites. But when they came out of Egypt, Israel went through the wilderness, Red Sea, and Kadesh. And then Israel sent the messengers to the king of Edom saying, give us permission. Okay, we read that part. Now, <clears throat> let's go down here a little bit further. Here we go. Now, since the Lord, the God of Israel, has driven the Amorites out before his people of Israel. What right do you have to take it over? Will not you just take what your God Chemosh gives you? Likewise, whatever the Lord our God has given us, we will possess. Are you any better than Balak, the son of it's pouring rain out now, of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever quarrel with Israel and fight with them? For 300 years, Israel occupied Hezbon. Oops, sorry. Hezbon. And said to him, let us pass through the country. Did we read that part already? Pay attention, Jared. Uh, we read that part. Okay. The king of Ammon had paid no attention to the message that Jephthah sent him. Then the spirit of the Lord came to Jephthah, and he crossed Gilead and Manasseh and passed through the mitzpah of the Gilead. And there they advanced to the Amorites. Hey, we got a super chat. All right. All right. Blow up NASA. I like it. Have you ever done an early life check on the cast of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory to see who's Jewish? No, I have not. 
Uh, I should do that. Uh, if you give the Amorites into my hands, whatever comes out of the door of my house. Oh, so here's this important part now. So what we've got here, ladies and gentlemen, Christian believers, Christians, you've got a man who wants power, wants to take over a group of people, wants to be the king, and he's going to make a deal with God. Okay. Hey, we got, we got a super chat. Hey, we got a super chat. Cat lady forever, Lori G in the house. Lori, thank you for being coming a member. Uh, listen carefully. So he made a vow to the Lord. Okay. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord. If you give the Amorites into my hands, whatever comes out of my door of my house to meet me when I return in triumph from the Amorites will be the Lord's and I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. Okay. So now we've got somebody offering to give up a human life for power. It's weird. I'm trying to think who offers to give up, who gives people riches and powers on earth in exchange for human lives. Hmm. Then Jephthah went over to fight the Amorites, and the Lord God gave him into his hands. God is the one who's responsible. He devastated 20 towns, 20 towns, from Aor to the vicinity of Mamith, as far as the Abel Karamimim, thus Israel subdued Ammon. When Jephthah returned to his home in Mitzpah, who should come out to meet him but his daughter, dancing to the sound of timbrels? She was an only child, except for her, he had neither son nor daughter. When he saw her, he tore his clothes and cried, Oh my God, oh no. My daughter, you have brought me down and I am devastated. I have made a vow to the Lord that I cannot break. Okay, let's think real quick. Your God knows all. So when he made this deal with him, he knew it was going to be his daughter that he would have to sacrifice in a burnt offering, you sickos. You sickos. Who do we know that takes sacrifices and gives you powers on earth? I know one character that does, and you worship him. Again, you're from your the devil's father, not your father the devil, which wouldn't even make sense. Nobody's father's the devil. The devil doesn't have any children. Think about it. Jesus was saying, you are from the father of the devil, who is the Old Testament God. You understand? We know that. That's And he gave a birth to a bunch of little demons. Here's another thing you have to know. Why would the 33% of the angels leave heaven if God was a good? If God was just good, what would you have against a good God? Oh, I'm just a wicked hearted person. I got to get it. We're going to go take over. We're going to get out of here. We're going to. No, it's because they didn't like God. God of the Old Testament is Satan, by the way. You'll see that. On McInnes, Alex Stein said he isn't really a flat earther. No, he didn't. Wake up. He said, do you believe there's something? He's like, well, no, but I think there's some things that are, you know, weird about it. And I just told the story of why he said that. Stop being a crybaby. Get over it. He's a flat earther. Oh, well. It's not the end of the world. Thank you, though, for the support. Um, let's see where we are here. My father, you re she replied, you have given your word to the Lord. Do to me just as you promised. Now that the Lord has avenged your enemies, the Amorites, but grant me this one request, she said. Give me two months to roam the hills and weep with my friends because I will never marry. I mean, and this is the God that you guys worship and tell me is good. You tell me he's just, he's worship worthy. No, he's not. No, he's not. And if you aren't man enough to stand up and say that, then don't, I mean, you're, there's no reward for you. There's no reward in the end. You have chosen to worship and pay homage and love and gratitude to a demon who sacrifices humans who trades sacrificed humans for glory. What this story tells me is that if I want to be great in this world, all I got to do is make a deal with God. God, give me uh, 20 cities. I want to take over 20 cities in exchange for whoever comes out of my house, whatever human, I don't care who it is. I'll sacrifice them. Deal. Th this is the God that you worship. And it's in your book. There's no way around this story. I've tried to talk to people about it. They give me, st I mean, oh, that's another thing. When, the worst part is when you talk to a Christian and they have to rationalize it. Imagine, Christians try and rationalize the story. Well, no, what it's really telling you, though, Jaron, is you don't want to make deals with God because, look, at he lost his daughter. And he's upset now because he lost his daughter and he shouldn't have done that. He shouldn't have made... Then why doesn't the story say that? This is supposedly a book written by the Creator to give us... Like, if you were going to leave a book for your son, let's say you found out tomorrow you're going to die. You have three three weeks to live. Your kid's three months old. He'll never know you, but you better write him a book. Write him a book about who you are. Would you put in there shit like this? 
Well, what I really meant, son, was that you really shouldn't make deals with God like that because, see, it was sad about, no, just don't allow human sacrifices in exchange for goods and greatness and power on earth. The devil is the one. When they, it's so funny because Christians go around and they tell me everything's satanic. That's satanic. That's satanic. This is satanic. Your God is sacrificing humans in exchange for cities on earth. How, how does this, how is this not get through to people? How, like nobody told me this when I was raised my whole life as a Catholic. I never saw these things. They were hidden from me or something. But if somebody would have told me, Jaron, look at this story. Yeah, at the time I would have tried to rationalize it, but I would have thought about it a lot over the next months, years. And I would have realized, I don't think it's good to pay homage to this character. The God of the Old Testament is disgusting. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's no question. There's no question. And it's sad that people don't see it, that people don't see it. And I don't know what to do about it other than it, I hope people realize what it's doing to the world. Like what belief in gods like that do? Now, again, I'm not saying there's no God. I'm not an atheist. I know that there's a God. There's a creator God. But the creator God would never do, and this is how we know, God put morality in your heart. You have it inside you. We're going to talk about it in a little bit. So that you can discern when somebody is actually talking about God. So you have morality in your heart. You know it's not okay to make deals for all exchange for power. I'll sacrifice my daughter. You know that that's not okay. It's in your heart. So when you see God making that deal, guess what? It's easy, folks. It's simple. Oh, that's not God. End of story. Oh, that's the God of the Jews. No wonder they're fucking evil. I mean, you know, the, you know, you know what I'm saying. The, the, not the Jews. The Jews aren't evil. They're great. But I'm saying like, you know, the people that pretend to be Jews or... Pretend to be anti-Semites or something. You know, how could you be an anti-Semite? Um, anyway, so you may go, he said, and let her go. You know, wait, sorry, you may go, he said, and he let her go for two months. Now, if God wrote this book and he wanted, he should say, then God said, I'm not going to let you sacrifice your daughter. Don't be an idiot. Don't make me deals like that. No, that's not what happened. She and her friends went into the hills and wept because she would never marry. And after two months, she returned to her father and he did as he vowed. And she was a virgin. He burnt her as a burnt sacrifice to the God of this world. From this comes the Israelite tradition that each year the young women of Israel go out for four days to commemorate the daughter of Jephepheth in Galidia I, I, I'm, I'm baffled that people would not understand what's going on here. Baffled. Okay. This is not okay. Stop pretending like it is. Stop being okay with these things. You are a human being that has every right to stand up for yourself. You cannot be afraid of God when that God is not moral. Do you understand? Christians are under some delusion that they have to worship God no matter how bad he is. Where do you draw the line? Where do you draw the line? You should draw the line at morality because God gave you morals. You know what's right and wrong. So when you see God say, let's go to, uh, let's go to this chapter here. Uh, I believe it's in, um, uh, <clears throat> let me find it. Uh, yes. Okay. It's one, there's so many, it's not just one thing. It's all over this, all over, everywhere you can possibly imagine. So here's the thing. If you think about it, now, did you know that even the early Christians, the earliest Christians believed that the God of the Old Testament was Satan? We don't even know that because people have been so swept up in this idea of God's good and he's just and he's great. Well, which God are you talking about? You're, are you talking about the God of all gods or are you talking about this lesser piece of shit Jehovah? Because they're very different and stop saying they're the same person. Jesus knew they were different. Jesus told you that God is in your heart. The kingdom of God is within you. Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Uh, he was picking up wheat on a Sunday or a Sabbath. And they said, well, why are you doing that? He said, well, the Sabbath was made for man, not man made for the Sabbath. Yet in the Old Testament, this person that you think is the same person, oh, it's three in one. Moses took him and said, 
a God, this man has been picking up sticks on the Sabbath. What should we do with them? You know what God said? Stone him to death. And then when I tell that to a Christian, you know what they tell me? What, what if he was a really bad person? Well, then why didn't they write that in the book? Huh? If he was a really bad person, maybe that should have been included in the text. Not just tell me that he's, a, oh, he's a really bad person. Why didn't it say that? They left that part out? No, God is a tyrant. He wants you to do things his way or he will kill you. Okay? You drop his little Ark of the Covenant, he kills you. Okay? Satan comes and does a bunch of dirtball shit and corrupts the world. So what does he do? Floods everybody. The God of the Old Testament is a demon. Demon. He liked the gifts of Abel better than the gifts of Cain, which is why Cain killed him. But the gifts of Abel were dead animals. So of course the God likes the dead animals more than he likes the plants and fruits and vegetables. Oh, boy. Um, so Leviticus 1... Oops, I don't want to... Get a summary. Where's the chapters? I don't know how to use this. What am I at? Bible Gateway? Leviticus. What is going on here? Why does that happen like that? Um, <clears throat> where are we at here? So Leviticus 1, I think it's like 10 or something. All right, let's go read full chapter. All right, so this is just the burnt offering. So, And again, you can say, oh, this is the old times. There's no excuse for this. If you're a Christian, listen to me. There is no excuse for acting like this if you're a god. You don't need to do it. People are like, oh, but the people were different. And they needed to be taught this way. No, you're a parent. I'm sure, many of us here are parents. Would you ever in a million years teach your child some lesson by telling him, hey, go get a cat, kill that cat, sacrifice it on the front doorstep, and then I'll forgive you your sins? Because I'm teaching you something. I'm teaching you to be a terrible, terrible person. That's what I'm teaching you. Um. The Lord God, he spoke to him in front of the tent of meeting, and he said, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When anyone among you brings an offering to the Lord, bring your offering of an animal of either the herd or flock. So God wants dead animals brought to him to his altar. If the offering is a burnt offering from the herd, you are to offer a male without defect. That's all that God wants. You must present it at the entrance to the tent of the meeting so that it will be acceptable to the Lord. You're to lay your hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it will be accepted on your behalf to make atonement for you. What kind of psychopath would say, Yeah, you've done a bunch of sins, and you know what? Christians try and rationalize it. They're like, oh, it's a precursor of Jesus because he died for our sins, so this animal died for their sins. Shut the fuck up. You're rationalizing the God demanding that they kill an animal so that their sins are forgiven. You are to slaughter the burnt offering, and it will be accepted on your behalf to make atonement for you. You are to slaughter the young bull before the Lord, and then Aaron's son's priest shall bring the blood and splash it against the sides of the altar at the entrance. to Very important. God's very into blood splashing. This makes a lot of sense. This is the devil, folks. Pay attention. You are to skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. The sons of the altar and the entrance to the tent. Oops, sorry. The sons of Aaron and the priest are to put fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. Then Aaron's sons, the priest, shall arrange the pieces, including the head and the fat, on the wood that is burning on the altar. You are to wash the internal organs and the legs with water. And the priest is to burn all of it on the altar. It is a burnt offering, a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Do you think God likes the smell of burnt animals? What's wrong with you? If the offering is a burnt offering from the flock or of either the sheep or the goats, you are to offer a male without defect. You are to, like, I can't even fathom in my head right now if Christians are watching this, they can't, that are trying to rationalize, that are like, no, I have to worship this. I have to worship the evil one. I have to. He created us, Jaron. Where do you draw the line? What if he came down and started raping your wife, doing something terrible to your children? Would you then draw the line? Or are you going to say, mm -mm, we got to do whatever God says? Like, do you realize how disgusting that is? Do you realize that we're being tested here? And one of the biggest tests is, do you worship a demon? That's the test. Um, you must splash his blood against the sides of the altar, of course. You are to cut it into pieces. And by the way, you're going to hear all kinds of people making videos about this. You got to have the gym bobs and you're going to have the, the, the pea, pea brains, right? There's, oh, Jaron is straw man and God. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not. Pay attention. I'm telling you what the book says. Okay. It's your own book that is talking about your God that you worship in a, and they keep describing him terribly. Isn't it obvious that this is just simply man's interpretation or ideas of God? This isn't, you think God want this read? Again, it'd be like me leaving a book for my son 
who I'm going to die in a couple weeks. So I leave a book for my son and it just says all this wicked shit in there. Oh, and then I would demand that people bring me animals and slaughter them on my altar and splash blood on it. And this is really important for people to hear 2,000 years from now. So put it in the scripture. Jeez. You are to cut it into pieces. The priest shall arrange them again, including the head and the fat and the wood and the burning of the altar and the burnt offering is pleasing to the Lord. If the offering to the Lord is a burnt offering of birds, you are to offer a dove or a young pigeon. Right. God likes birds too. The priest shall bring it to the altar, ring off the head, and burn it on the altar. You know what a ring is? Do you know what ring off the head is? You think God wrote this? God wants you to tear the head of a bird off? Then its blood shall be drained out the side of the altar. He is to remove the crop and the feathers and throw them down east of the altar. It's very important that you throw them down east. God is very particular. Okay, it's God of the creator of this world. Think how particular he is. He really wants the, the feathers to be thrown on the east side of the altar. Okay, where the ashes are. He shall tear it open. By the wings, tear the bird open, not dividing it completely. And then the priest shall burn it on the wood that is burning on the altar. It is a burnt offering, a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. And it goes on and on. This whole entire book is garbage. It's garbage. Now, this is, I don't think Christians have read the Bible because you can't read this and be like, oh, I love this God. Oh, I praise and worship God. And Jaron, how dare you talk bad about God? It's sacrilegious. It's blasphemy. No, it's not blasphemy to call a demon a demon. Not in the least bit. There's nothing blasphemous about that. In fact, God cheers me on. Okay? Um, and it talks, you know, again, this all, and it's always like God wants all these things brought to his altar. And you know what's happening here is that Moses and his son stole all this stuff. God didn't come down and take the animals or take the food or take the grain or take the gold. Moses and his, and his brother stole it. And you go, no, praise Jesus, praise the Lord. Um, I mean, this is talking about if, you, you know, if a grain offering is cooked in a pan, it is to be made by the finest flour and some olive oil. Bring the grain offering made of these things to the Lord. Present it to the priest who will take it to the altar. He shall take out the memorial portion of the grain offering and burn it on the altar as a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering belongs to Aaron and his sons. It is the most holy part of the food offerings presented to the Lord. Who do you think wrote this? I don't know, maybe Aaron and his fucking sons? Every grain offering you bring to the Lord must be made without yeast. For you are not to burn any yeast or honey in a food offering presented to the Lord. The Lord's very particular. You may bring, and people are like, I want to spend forever with him. I want to go to heaven and, spend, and be hand in hand singing glory and praise to he who wanted us to ring off the heads of birds. It's, it's absolutely disgusting. You may bring them to the Lord as an offering of the first fruits, but they are not to be offered on the altar as a pleasing aroma. Season all your grain offerings with salt. Do not leave the salt on the covenant. I'm sorry. Do not leave the salt of the covenant of your God, out of the grain offerings, add salt to your offerings. I want you to think real quick. Here's one evidence that it's not God. He says, I'm a jealous God. Think about that for a second. I'm a jealous God. Jealous of what? God needs nothing. God needs no one. God is completely self-sufficient, and everything is in God. So why would God be jealous? Do you know that the whole entire book of the Bible, the whole entire books of the Bible, is describing different gods that were like of different people? Mm. And there's like, we talk about the God that came and killed the firstborn of the Egyptians. Here's the problem with that, is that the Egyptians had their own God, and this God to them seemed like a demon. He came inflicting pain and punishment on them. So they said, don't worship him. Don't let the Israelites go. He keeps doing these plagues on us. Yet we're like, oh, go, God, plague the Egyptians. Yeah, send more things, kill the firstborn of all their cows and children. And how do Christians rationalize it? Well, the Egyptians were killing their, God, their kids. Oh, okay. What happened to Jesus saying, turn the other cheek? So he just completely flipped. He went from saying, you killed their, I'm going to kill your children. To turn the other cheek, love your neighbor, love your enemy. Oh, it's the same God, Jaron, same person, same, same entity. No, it's not. Your entire religion is the worship of a demon. And I believe Jesus came and Jesus made those proclamations and said, that is not God. I am from my Father, the Father in heaven. You are from the Father of the devil, who is Jehovah. Okay? Now again, imagine just for a second that that's what Jesus came saying. Do you think that they would tell us that? Or do you think that they would write the Bible in a way that describes Jesus being like God? He's the same as God. He's it makes no sense. This is why the whole Trinity thing makes no sense. 
it's because they're trying to marry two things that were not intended to be married. It doesn't make any sense. Why is the God of the Old Testament saying eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth? Jesus, turn the other cheek. Oh, same God, Jaron, same person, same entity. Really? It, your religion is so screwed up that you've now, you've now inflicted yourself with the immorality of the God of the Bible. People think that it's good to kill people and it's good. We need to have tyrants in charge. We need to, no, it, you are falling for one of the biggest tricks I've ever seen. Oh, but Jaron, Christianity is con condemned and held back and held down. No, it's not. The Bible's in every hotel room. They, they want you to read the Bible. Why don't they have any taxes for these priests? Have you seen these guys that make millions of dollars on preaching? They make people fall down with their hands. and This is what your religion has become. And I think we are at a place in humanity where we should realize what's going on. Now, here's my problem with it, is I'm afraid to talk bad about Christianity because if it wasn't for Christianity, this place would be being overrun right now by trans. I realize that, okay? But it's because basically these people that want to stop it also wouldn't, wouldn't mind if you killed them all. And that's a problem. Okay, we need to treat people a little bit. We don't just say kill them, kill them all. But that's what Christians think. They think they stand outside of churches with signs that say God hates fags. Do you really think God hates fags? It's just very strange. Um, so anyway, that's uh, one reason. But anyway, we'll get on to the other part. But this just wanted to open it up and just tell you. And again, I don't remember where the... Anybody know where... I don't think it's John... Hmm, I don't know. Eight... 40? I don't know. Somewhere in there. Somewhere in there uh, as a readful chapter. I just wanted to show you where it says, and then you can look at the Greek. Look up the Greek yourself. Um, you do not know me or my father. So again, uh, so these are the priests, and they worshipped and adored and preached about God of the Old Testament. And Jesus comes along saying, you don't know my father. So how is it the same person? That's who they worship. That's who they praise. That's who they, the prophets were talking about. No, it's because it's a different person. God is, Jesus is talking about his father, the great God, the creator of all, not these lesser gods who go around and cause havoc and are disgusting, okay? Who you believe somehow because he was written to the Bible and you just think we have to believe in the books of the Bible for some reason. Um, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I came from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. Notice this. Why is this the same God who passed judgment the entire time of the Old Testament? Do you realize these are not the same entities? Do you I mean, how is this hard to figure out? It's not even difficult. But if I do judge, my decisions are true because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself. The other witness is my Father who sent me. They asked him, where is your Father? You do not know me or my Father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. He spoke these words, sorry, he spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his hour had not yet come. Once more, Jesus said to them, I am going away, and you will look for me, and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask, will he kill himself? Is that what he's saying? Or where I go, you cannot come. But he continued, you are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins if you do not believe that I am he. You will indeed die in your sins. Who are you? They asked. Just what I have been telling you from the beginning, Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you. But he who has sent me is trustworthy, and what I have heard from him I tell the world. They did not understand that he was telling him, them about his father. So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. Now people think he's talking about the Old Testament God. Different people. Different people. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Even as I spoke, many believed in him. Now think about it. Again, does Jesus do what the God of the Old Testament does? Never. Never. But he says here that he does what God tells him to do. So if Jesus was all good, then the God, his Father, must be all good, 
And if him is all good, then it can't be the Old Testament God. It's not difficult. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, oh, you know, we can get that. You want to see this? Sorry. Maybe you want to watch or read along. This is Bible study, by the way. Sunday Bible study with Jaron. Um, Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins, I'm sorry. They answered it. I uh, sorry, went too far. All right. Jesus. Hey, we got some money. Hey, what we got? Hey, uh, Joan Margaret. Thank you very much, Joan. How are you? Nice to see you again. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and we have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. We're going to get into this. Everyone who worships is a slave to worship. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me, because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you are doing what you have heard from your father. Okay? Now again, if you think he's talking about Satan here, okay, pay attention. Satan does not have children. Who has children? Okay. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did no, not do such things. What? What do you mean? Okay, if you are doing the works of your own father, we are not illegitimate children. They protested. The only father we have is God Himself. Jesus said to them, "If God were your father, you would love me, for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me." Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. Now, in Greek, this is, you belong to the father of the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Now, where is he talking about, where did Satan lie? We should have to see some evidence of this, or else he's probably not talking about that. Does Satan lie? Why is the Bible describe a God who murders and maims and wants blood sacrifice and takes deals for human life in exchange for worldly powers and goods and, and, and money and riches? Why would that be? See what I'm saying? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, yet because I tell the truth, I'm sorry, when he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Now, I can show you numerous times in the Bible that God lies. I can show you numerous times in the Bible where God tells people to lie. He says, oh, go into this city and do this, this, and this, and tell them that you're there for this reason, just so you can you know, get away from something. Now God is telling people to lie, telling human beings to lie? Why would you ever worship this character? Um, beginning not holding the truth. Okay, yes. Okay, yeah. where are we at here? He speaks his native language, for he is a liar, father of lies. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. The Jews answered him, Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon possessed? I am not possessed by a demon, said Jesus, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. I'm not seeking glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Very truly, I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. As this they exclaimed, now we know you are demon-possessed. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say that whoever obeys your word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. So who do you think you are? Jesus said, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me, though you do not know him. I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you, but I do know him and I obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You're not yet 50, they said. And you've seen Abraham? Very truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this, they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid away and uh, slipping away from the temple grounds. They're like, I'm going to get this stone and get you. By now. now, you might be saying, Jaron, do you believe these stories? No, I don't believe these stories. You know, I don't believe these stories. But I think that the what they're trying to get across 
Sometimes I think some things were left in that Jesus might have actually said. Now, can I ever know which is true and which is not? No. So could God ever require me to know? No. So what could God require of me? Well, he could require that I have morality in my heart, and I read a book that says, Jaron, this is God. Remember, God didn't tell you he wrote the Bible. He didn't tell me that he wrote the Bible. Maybe he told, told Dean Odell, I don't know, but he didn't tell me. And so my only weapon, <clears throat> my only tool of discernment is my morality. So my job is to read anything. that Somebody says, this is God. Read it and go, nah, don't think so. And that's it. It's that simple. Why would I go beyond that? Oh, but Jaron, you don't know. It could be him because... No, even if it if it is him, then I'm not worshiping that God. And if it's not him, then it's certainly written by men, and men are p- pathetic and weak and, and tell stories that are nonsense. So it's very simple. It's not even a question. I have no remorse. I, I, know, I know when I'm doing wrong, when I'm sinning or anything like that, because I feel like a burning. And when I talk about this, I don't feel any of that. It's like I feel when I talk shit about the globe. I don't feel bad at all. Like if we really lived there, you couldn't talk shit about it. You would just, you would feel gross. Like you can't talk shit about your house or where you live. You, you wouldn't do that. It, it would, something would feel wrong. But yet we can just all talk shit about the globe and shit on it. Well, why? Because that, nobody lives there. Nobody lives on a ball flying right now 800 times the speed of a bullet, which is just ludicrous. Twice the speed of a bullet is ludicrous. Three times is insane. Four times is nonsense. Ten times is what the hell's going on. 800 times. Just crazy. Um, where's this part here? We, again, you know, uh, they brought the, to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. <clears throat> now, the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was the Sabbath. Remember that the reason the Pharisees were acting like this is because in the Old Testament, when somebody did something on the Sabbath, God told them to stone him to death. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud in my eyes. The man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. The Old Testament that we read says God killed people who didn't keep the Sabbath, stoned them. But others asked, how can a sinner perform such signs then? So they were divided. Then they turned against the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes that he opened. The man said, he is a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, they asked? Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it now he can see? We know he is our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see now or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who had already decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said he is of age. Ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God by telling the truth, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, where, where he is, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. They then asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I already told you, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want, me, do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him. You are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses. But as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, Now this is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, You were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. So they believed that, because remember, your God that you worship so much says he punishes to the 10th generation. Can you imagine? Oh, he's just. He's so just, Jaron. Oh, really? By punishing children for their great, 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 great grandpa's mistakes? Oh, just. Just as can be. Where do I sign up to worship this just God? Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking to you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who will see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, What? Are we blind too? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. Um, Maybe it's the next chapter I wanted to show. Uh, Great to read this though. I mean, again, I think it just explains more and more 
that um, Jesus is not talking about the same person. Okay? Uh, and again, here's the problem, is that I think a lot of the words have been changed, so we can't even bank much on this. Again, there's no original manuscript. Okay? None. So there's no original. It's all copies of copies of copies. Um and many people came to him and they saw it there. John never performed a sign, and all that John said was this man was true. And the place many believed Jesus. Uh demon possessed again. This is not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. All right, I'll get up. All right, so let me just go to one other thing here. I've got this saved over here, which is on this page. Yes. Pretty cool uh site if you're looking for a Bible uh what do you want to call this? Study guide or where you can actually like highlight things and stuff like that it is the blue letter bible oops that's not it hold on it's the blue letter bibles ah they have a i don't know what it's called now what uh shoot i can't remember the name of it uh let me think real quick i'm thinking what is the name of that site some sort of study guide i can't remember the name of it anyway um so we are in Deuteronomy 22. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. This has the highlights. I put highlights in there, didn't I? Highlights. Okay, there we go. So we're now reading Deuteronomy 22, okay? And let's just read it from the top, and then we'll get into the rest of who you should not worship. But thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray and hide thyself. Oh, you want to read with me? I know, I know. Let's go over there. Where is Deuteronomy? Okay, so I'm putting this up there, and you can see that still? Good. <clears throat> thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt in any case bring them again to thy brother. And if thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if thou know him, then thou shalt bring him into thine own house, and it shall be with thee until thy brother seek after it, and thou shalt restore it to him. Again, so funny too that God and Jesus are the same person, but in the Old Testament, God talks ridiculously. And then in the New Testament, Jesus talks like a person. <laughs> he doesn't say thou and you know all these things. In a like manner shall you do with his ass, and so shall it be done to the raiment. And with all lost thing of thy brothers, which he has lost and thou hast found, shall thou do likewise, thou mayest not hide thyself. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ass or his ox fall down by the way, and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt surely help him to lift them up again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all they do are, for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. If a bird's nest chance to be before thee, in the way of any in any tree, or on the ground, whether they be young ones or eggs, and the dam sitting upon the young or upon the eggs, thou shalt not take the dam with the young. Thou shalt in any wise let the dam go, and take the young to thee. What? And it shall be well with thee, that thou mayest prolong thy days. So God says, if you come across a nest, and it's got eggs in there and a mother, let the mother go, take the eggs. Oh, praise be to God. When thou buildest a new house, then thou shalt make a battlement for thy roof, and thou bring not blood upon thine house if any man fall from thence. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with divers seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Thou shalt not wear a garment of divers sorts as woolen and linen. Thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture. And here's the laws on morality. These are laws on morality by the great God of all. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her, let's think of what that is. If any man takes a wife, has sex with her, and hates her, and give occasion of speech against her, so he's now talking shit about her, and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman, and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. So what they're saying is now, if the guy says, hey, I married this woman, she's supposed to be a virgin, we went and had sex, she's not a virgin. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city of the gate. Now God is telling them to go grab her bed sheets or something, or her panties, or I don't know what. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man, and he hateth her. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet they are, th and yet, Oops. thank you very much, thank you very much. J.C. Overload. Thank you very much. And he hath given occasion of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. So now he's showing the she Look at She's bleeding. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. Here's her blood. 
to the elders, and the elders of the city shall take the man that, and chastise him. How dare you? You can. She was a virgin. And they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver. Now he must pay, because he was talking shit about his wife. Can't do that. And give them unto the father of the damsel, because he hath brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel. And she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. That's great, God. So God said, you know, you call her names. Also, you know, she's still your wife. You got to be your wife. Lucky girl, right? But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, what if they couldn't find the sheep? What if it had been washed months ago? What if it had disappeared? Okay. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of the city shall stone her with stones that she die. If you worship that as God, you're of your father, the devil. How, how is that okay? So if a girl and a guy have sex and the guy says, I hate this woman, and you can't provide evidence that she was a virgin, God gave you permission to stone her to death. Stoning. Think of how wicked and evil people are today. They would never stone somebody. Stone them? If a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband, then they shall both then shall both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shalt thou put away evil from Israel. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto a husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then he shall bring them both out into the gate of the city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. <laughs> now you might ask, wait, what? Why would the girl die? Right? But it says here. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city. And what? Now God's saying you kill her because she didn't cry out, because she was being raped. Well, maybe she froze up, God. Maybe there was nobody around. There's a lot of things that could go on besides she didn't cry, therefore she must be stoned to death. And the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, thou shalt put away evil from among you. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in a field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when the man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. For he found her in a field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. How would you know that? If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold of her and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, that she may shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her, he may not put her away all his days. Imagine that story. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, so let's say you're the most ugly man in this in the Israel, just look like Danny DeVito or something, and you see a hot girl that's a virgin. Oh man, I want that. I want that girl, and she's not betrothed. She's not engaged to anybody. She's not married. Okay, and you lay hold of her. Come here. We're gonna have sex, and they be found having sex. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto her father fifty shekels of silver. Yeah, I was raping your daughter. Here's 50 shekels. And she may be his wife. God is telling this like it's okay. Would you debate Adam Green regarding your Jesus theory? What's my Jesus theory? Debate Adam Green? No, I, I kind of agree with Adam on most things. Um, but, well, Adam is a total atheist. So I don't agree with him on that. But here's the thing. It's hard. To, you can't debate it because you you can't prove these things. Again, you would have to tell me that everything written in this book is true, and then from there I can make decisions. But otherwise, I think that they changed the words of Jesus. I think they changed the words that were in there. And we know that Romans 13 is all you need to know that the Bible was not written by God, period. <clears throat> A man shall take not his father's wife, nor discover his father's skirt. So we have that one. Hold on. I got one more here. We got this one, and then we'll get into that. Did I have any more? Where is this? Yes. And we've got uh, that part we already did, that part we did, that part we did. Um, Oh, I know. I put them in the Bible category. That's why. By the way, if you don't use Raindrop, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. It is one of the best uh, apps that you can use for saving everything. You can just save anything, a little little thing you click on, and then you can put it into categories, and you can uh, save like, the site, the thumbnail. Excuse me. Uh, but right now it's not organized by date, so I'm going to fix that by date going down. Thank you. Uh, let me see this one, what we had here. What is this? Deuteronomy 22, 21. 
Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> these stories are just, they they tell you everything you need to know. And I can't understand how I can say something there, but like, nope, I still want to believe in that, Jaren. I still believe that I should worship whoever wrote that book. Why would you feel that way? If you're afraid of God, how would you think that that's okay by God? Think about it. We know that when a husband and wife are together, let's say if the husband tells his wife, if you talk to any other man, I'm a jealous man. If you talk to any other man, I will burn you for eternity. If that, if that was ever said, and then the girl's like, oh, I love him, we would all be like, oh my God, what's wrong with her? She's so uh, scared of him that she, it's like the, it Stockholm Syndrome. So all Christians have Stockholm Syndrome. They're afraid of the demon God, afraid that he's going to, the just God is going to give them an eternity of burning fire in brimstone in exchange for 100 bad years on life. And then you still use the word just? It's the least just person there's ever been. If one be found slain in the land with the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess, living in the field, lying in the field, and it not be known who slain him. Right. So we don't know who slain this guy. He's just laying in the middle of a field. Then thy elders and thy judges shall come forth, and they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain. So now we got a dead body. Now we're going to measure this city, this city, this city, this city. All right. We got 10 miles here, four miles, six miles, and eight miles. Okay. Uh, and it shall be that the city which is next unto the slain man, even if the elders of the city shall take a heifer, I'm sorry, even the elders of a city shall take a heifer which hath not been wrought with, and which hath not drawn in the yoke. I don't know what that means. So I guess it's an unblemished heifer. And the elders of the city shall bring down the heifer under the rough, rough valley, which is neither eared nor sown, and shall strike the heifer's neck there in the valley. So God is now saying, if you find a dead man in between these cities, go get a cow and bring it here, and then cut its neck. And the priests of the sons of Levi shall come near, for them the Lord thy God has given, chosen to minister unto him and to bless in the name of the Lord. And by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried. And all the elders of the city that are next unto the slain man shall wash their hands over the heifer that is beheaded in the valley. And they shall answer and say, Our hands have not shed this blood, neither have our eyes seen it. You, you, okay. All right. Be merciful, O Lord, unto thy people of Israel, whom... Thou hast redeemed, and lay not innocent blood unto the people of Israel's charge, and the blood shall be forgiven of them. So shalt thou put away the guilt of innocent blood from among you. So now, why wouldn't everybody just go kill people and leave them in the middle of the field? If you do that, then you have to go get a cow, murder it, and then you're forgiven. Why would you ever, ever put any devotion into this God? When thou go forth to war against these thine enemies, and the Lord God has delivered them into your hands, and thou hast taken them captive, and seest among the captives a beautiful woman. Oh, nice. You know, we took this city over. There's a beautiful woman there. And you have a desire unto her that thou wouldest have her to be your wife. Then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head and pare her nails. And she shall put on the raiment of her captivity from off her, and shall remain in thine house. And bewail her father and mother for a full month, right? So she's got to mourn, cry. Her mother and father were killed in a vicious attack that God gave them. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her. Now go have sex with her and be her husband, and she shall be your wife. Thank you, God. Thanks. Thank God he told us all these things. He, he instructed. This is why humanity is so great. It's because God instructed him like this. He told the, the Jews to go kill people. He helped them kill other nations. He flooded the world. I mean... No wonder people are so screwed up. And it shall be, if thou have no delight in her, then thou shalt let her go whither she will. But thou shalt not sell her for all at all for money. Thou shalt not make merchandise of her, because thou hast humbled her. Right. You already had sex with her. If you don't like her, just let her go. Get, kick her out. But don't make merchandise of her, because you humbled her. If a man has two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne children to him, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, okay, so we've got, you have two wives, one you love, one you hate, but the firstborn son is born to the hated one, okay? Then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the first of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated. Right, you got to do the son of the hated first, which is indeed the firstborn, right? But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him double portion of all that he hath. I don't even understand that what that means. 
he shall acknowledge the son of the hated one for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he had? <laughs> what do you mean? If I die, how can I give my son a double portion of everything that I have? <laughs> Take that and double it. Double, double everything I have. I have, two, I have one house. I have two. Give him two houses. But sir, you only have one. I don't care. I'm gonna die, about to die. I want you to give him double portion of everything I own. Sir, but you only own one of those. Give him two. Yeah, but you only have one that we can. I said give him two. God said he gets double portion. For he is the beginning of his strength, and the right of the firstborn is his. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, yeah, great, which does not obey the voice of his father, so well, that's Maverick, or the voice of his mother, Maverick, and that when they chastised him or chastened him, he will not hearken unto them. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold of him and bring him unto the elders of the city, unto the gate of the place, and they shall say to the elders of the city, This is our son, he's stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He's a glutton and a drunkard. And then all the men of the, and the, men of the city shall stone him with stones, that he may die. So shalt thou put away evil from among you. And all Israel. Now, again, this does not say the age of the child. Granted, you can say, well, it says drunkard, so you would think, isn't he a little bit older? Who knows? I don't know what, time, what age they drank in those days. Maybe he's 10. Who knows? But there's better ways to deal with people than to stone them for them being rebellious. But your God is teaching people that that's how we should handle. stone children to death. And if a man has committed a sin worthy of death and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is accursed of God, and thy land will not be defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. So God's giving these people land of inheritance. I mean, it's just pretty disgusting. Okay? Pretty disgusting. Um, this is God telling these people what he's going to, and this is why I just know it's Satan, or it's the, an evil God. This is talking about Exodus, uh, and God's talking about what they're going to do. They're going to get out of Egypt. And then he says down here, but every woman shall borrow of her neighbor. And what he's saying is when you leave, when the Israelites are getting ready to go out into the wilderness and get away from the Egyptians, he says, well, here, and I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty handed, but every woman shall borrow of her neighbor. By borrow, they mean steal, not borrow, steal. Every woman shall borrow of her neighbor. And of her that sojourneth in her house, jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. What that means is that you shall steal from them. Before you leave, grab a bunch of shit from them. Your God is telling people to steal from other people. For what re for Why? This is what you're teaching the Jews. Jews, before you leave there, I know you've been enslaved because you guys are killing their children and stuff. Before you leave there, steal all the stuff from them. Okie dokie, God. Okay. Let's go one more here. We've got uh, Ezekiel. They um, shall spoil them, spoil them and rob those. Oh, yeah, there's another version of, rob, of God telling people to rob people. It's like just disgusting to me that it's like, it should, we should all just look at this and go, man, that's a really bad, you know, stuff that, whoops, I grabbed the wrong thing. That's really bad stuff that God's doing. So clearly that's not God. No, instead people want to argue with me. People want to say, no, Jaron, I, I worship this God with all my heart and soul. Okie dokie. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both of the shields and of the bucklers, the bows and the arrows and the hand slaves, hand staves and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. What? And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the hand staves and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. Okay. Library of Alexandria burning for six months. I have problems with that, but seven years? Definitely burning for seven years. Easy. It just never goes out. No wind comes, I guess. So that they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any of the forests, for they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoiled them, and rob those that robbed them, saith God. Definitely the same person who said, turn the other cheek, love your neighbor, forgive your enemies, is the same God that said, rob those that robbed you, rob them. Rob them, get rid of them. Wow. 
it's just uh it's sad it's sad very very sad that people would worship this as a god i mean it's like so obvious why can't we be adults as as humans why do we have to be children that are still believing like nobody in the old days even believed it word for word nobody was a literalist like today they recognized that it was simile nobody's living in a whale okay it's simile it's metaphor god did not have a bet with satan to see who would kill or cause job to cause all that's it's a story it, it just recognize it for that stop being naive uh, and um Again, I mean, I didn't even see this before, but it says here, and they shall sever out men of continual employment, passing through the land to bury with the passengers, those that remain upon the face of the earth, to cleanse it. After the end of the seven months shall they search. And the passengers that pass through the land, when any seeth a man's bone, then shall he set up a sign by it, till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Hamangong. And also the name of the city shall be Hamara. Thus shall they cleanse the land. And thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord God, speak unto every feathered fowl and to every beast of the field, assemble yourselves, and come gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice, that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, of goats, of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan, and ye shall eat fat till ye be full, and drink blood till ye be drunken, of my sacrifice which I have sacrificed to you. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all the men of war, saith the Lord God. Why would you ever believe that God would say, why would you worship that? And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed. So this is why like, I don't have a problem with P-Brain when he goes after me. It just shows me who P-Brain is. He's disgusting. He would rather attack me than the God doing these things. I've never killed anybody. I've never told anybody to bring a head of a, of a dove. I've never done any of this shit. Never. I've never said, oh, just, that guy died? I'll go get a heifer, cut his neck open, and then, you know, I'll forgive you. Because I'm not demented. I'm not a demon. So if somebody wants to argue and wants to point out that I have a problem but not that God, then they are of the devil. They are of Satan. They are of the evil ilk. They've been overtaken in their worship of God. They've become drunk with the blood of a demon. Anyway, uh, let's get on to the main crux. I'm going to bring up the chat so I can see what you guys have to say. But we are going to talk about lots of things. We're going to talk about uh, who exactly you worship and why. And, and I cannot find it now. Where is it here? There we go. So <clears throat> in today's world, we need to ask ourselves, who do we worship? Because it's important. Okay. Who exactly do you worship? Because there is countless things going on around us. And I'm about to explain to you why they do what they do, why they want you to worship this God, why they want you to worship Taylor Swift, why they want you to worship power, why they want you to worship the news, why they want you to worship sports. What, what is the only thing that they never want you to do? And it's look inside yourself. They will never tell you to do that. They will tell you to go outside, outside, outside. You know why? Because God is inside you. Jesus said it. Do you hear anybody else saying it besides me? But they've, they've even convinced you that if, oh, you make yourself a God. So what do you think is better? To say, I don't worship this demon in the book. I'm going to look into myself, into my heart, and maybe worship myself. Which one's worse? Or saying, no, I'm not going to worship myself that has God inside me. I'd rather worship the demon. And people are so confused that they would rather say that there's a problem with people who would worship themselves. I'm not even saying to do that. We're going to get into that. But you see my point? Okay? So we find ourselves entranced, entranced, basically, by all these forces, all vying for our devotion, no matter which way they're coming from. And yet, we need to realize that wherever you pay your attention—and by the way, there's nobody who doesn't worship. Okay? There is no—I don't care if you're an atheist. 
I don't care if you are me. I don't care who you are. You worship something because that's where you put your attention. That's where you put your um, your devotion, I guess is the best word. So, and we need to get beyond, we're not going to, we're going to go beyond the confines of traditional religions, by the way. Okay. We're going to explore the very fabric of who exactly do we give our energy to? Because, <clears throat> excuse me, our worship takes countless different forms, comes in all kinds of forms, and it shapes the world around us based on what we pay attention to, what we devote our time and energy to. This is why they want you, everything that, everything you do needs to be outside of yourself. Go worship that baseball team. Go worship Taylor Swift. Worship the Super Bowl. Worship Beyonce. Worship Jay-Z. Okay? Because by doing that, they make sure that you never find God. You will be looking forever. You'll never find him out there. There is no God out there. There's no God anywhere outside you except for in other people. Right? In other people that are good-hearted, that have accepted that God inside them, then you could say, okay, that person... You might want to treat that person like God because they are God. Now, as we go deeper and deeper, we're going to kind of uncover these interconnected threads, if you will, binding us not only to each other, but to the very earth below us. Every action, every thought, every breath we take, we are making a silent offering to that which we devote our life to, to that which we worship. So let's unravel those mysteries of worship through in introspection, through in inquiry, that we can kind of light the path that will lead us to what you might call enlightenment. Uh, but I think it's better than that. There's a path that will lead you to ultimate bliss, okay, which includes compassion for others, which is a, a deeper understanding of each other. So you need to ask yourself, who do you worship? Where do you put your attention? Because in the end, it's not just about who we worship, but it's about the energy that we choose to amplify in our lives and in the world. So let's start with, oh wait, sorry, you don't want to look at that, my bad. I thought you are looking at me. And let me put up this too real quick. Let's go here. I want to get this chat going. Let's play a quick song while I fix this up. And we'll be back and we'll go through the details of worship. Uh, yeah, let's listen to this one. Why not? Be right back, guys. Until then, enjoy conspiracy music, guru. Oops. Move over here, please. Don't block me. There it is. Be right back. See you in I wonder minutes. if you would recommend locking down schools if you had to do it all over again. But you're okay. You're not gonna you're not gonna get COVID if you have these vaccinations. First of all, I didn't recommend locking anything down. People do not get sick. I recommended to the president that we shut the country down.
Good song, good song there. Good song. We are going to, uh, well, I don't know. We'll stay on YouTube for now. I'm just going to go over there. I'll start doing that soon. But today we're going to stay here and I'm just making sure this works. Should be able to get this on so I can read the chat as I go along here. Let's see if that works. We've got everybody on the screen except for, there we go. Does that work? I can read that, I think. Oh, it's a little small. But I can actually go to this and make it larger because I don't need to change the scene, do I? No. Let's go with studio mode off. Ah, that's much better. All right, I can read that. <clears throat> I remember the lyrics writing system with Crumb. They were, that was fantastic. Uh, so I did, Jaron done several of these God of the Bible hate videos. So he either is being told to do it or something happened to him. He blames God or lack of God. Now, random truth, you're way off. Listen, listen carefully. It's very simple. The God that you worship is demented and evil. How are you so dumb that you're going to come and say, there must be something wrong with Jaron. He doesn't want to worship an evil de deity. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Did you hear what I read? Your God demands sacrifice of, of people in exchange for goods of, on earth. And you're like, something's wrong with Jaron. Guys, something's wrong with Jaron. He's against the, uh, the demon in the book. Like, what is wrong with you? What is wrong? It's, it's so frustrating because th that means I live with evil, wicked people. It means I've got wicked people who watch me, people who have hate in their heart. It's a very sad feeling. You would think that everybody who's watching this would just go, oh, you're right. Clearly it's a demon. But no, people are like, something's wrong with Jaron. He must have been, he must have been talked to by somebody. That's the only reason he would ever have to go after an evil God who tells you to stone children to death. It's the only reason. There's no other reason anybody could ever go against God, but not because he's evil. It's like, what are you talking about? My goodness. You have to be able to stand up for yourself. You have to be able to, you were given morality by God. Hmm. I didn't say something is wrong with you personally. No, but you're saying that I, <laughs> okay, but hold on. Do you understand what I'm saying? What makes more sense? Somebody talked to me and for some reason I'm going after God or that it's exactly what I'm saying, that the God is not worthy of worship. That's it. And we're going to get into that. What do you pay your homage to and why you would do that? And doesn't somebody have to have reasons to do that? What, you, what I see in Christians is that they really feel that if it's God, then they have to worship him no matter what. That has to be your opinion. Because... It can't be based on that person being worthy of worship. God is not just. God is not ever loving. God is not peaceful. God is jealous, vindictive, hateful. He is wrath. He is he is he'll kill you. He'll send you to, you know, eternity in hell. He'll it's it's not a matter of being upset at God. It's realizing that that's not the creator. End of story. So, nobody talked to me. It's I read the book and the book says that's not God. So here's all I expect from Christians. At least accept my 
disagreement with your God. Don't start pointing, oh, somebody's talking to him, something's wrong with him. No. Just say, all right, Jaron doesn't worship our God because he doesn't think he's good. And let's just move on. But no, it's got to be, there's a problem with me. And this is why I keep doing videos like this, because you're not getting it. You're not getting it. I get messages from Christians all the time. Nathan, Nathan uh, Erickson, uh, Pitch Lumen, messaged me the other day, hey, he wants to debate me on modern day debate, modern day debates about the Bible. I'm like, dude, you do not want to do that. Yeah, I know. We've got to debate. I want to, let's debate on whether or not God is worthy of worship. Okay, Nathan. <laughs> okay, he's not. There's no debate. Unless you have sold yourself out to believe that you have to worship God no matter what. And again, if you're somebody who says, I don't like the God of the Old Testament, Jaron, I like Jesus. You know what? I'll give you a little. I'll give you a little. Jesus isn't bad. But where are you getting that story from? Is Jesus the same as God? Because clearly they're not. So are you choosing Jesus instead of the Old Testament God because he's better? Well, then I might see something there. But again, all you need to go to is Revelation 2.22. It's pretty sad I have been my Bible verses memorized. 222, I believe, or 223, let's see. And Jesus said, I mean, how do they say Jesus has never committed a sin, but he did this, okay? So this is in Revelation. He's talking to the churches, and he says, uh, 220, yeah, here. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira, right? These things saith the Son of God, who is Jesus, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Okay? And I gave her space to repent for her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he who searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto each one of you according to your works. Again, Paul says it's not about works. Jesus comes and says, yes, it is. Paul says you can't, there's no, there's no punishment for what the foods that you eat. That's over. We don't worry about the foods you eat doesn't matter what you eat. Jesus comes and says, that girl ate food that was that was sacrificed to idols. Therefore, I'm going to kill her children. He didn't even threaten to kill her. He said, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. So they're going to have some stress, except if they repent for their deeds. Okay. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he. Great. Jesus is now threatening to kill people's children for their sins. And you're like, sign me up. That's the great God that I worship and love and adore. Do you understand how disgusting you are to me? It's disgusting. I would never call that God. I could say, yeah, Jesus had some good things. I like some things about Jesus. Would you worship him as God? No. He's threatening ladies to kill their children. Children have done nothing wrong. I know Christians believe that we're all born in sin, so we're all evil and we don't deserve anything and we're all wicked and we don't terrible in the God, God's eyes. I know you believe that. But children have done nothing wrong. So you may not threaten to kill them because of things that their parents did. Yet Jesus thinks it's okay. Jesus will just do it. Uh, the great judge of all, he'll make sure that everyone knows that he is the one who searches hearts by killing the children of ladies who are whores. Okay. Whatever you say. Uh, let's get back to my little uh, presentation here. Let me double check on the chat, see if we've got... Oh, see now, if I got this over here, how am I going to have this notepad and that there? I liked it better before. Let's move it over. Studio mode. There we go. The Bible was written by man. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Somebody's actually waking up. Uh, he needs prayer. Me? P please pray to that God for me. Yeah, that's really what I want. Pray to the God that wants you to wring a dove's neck. Again, look at this, people. I'm saying this God wants evil things to happen. He wants you to wring a bird's neck and drip its blood on its altar. And then I'm saying... I don't think God's killed anybody. I don't think God's ever told you to kill an animal. I don't think God wants sacrifice. God doesn't want anything. God isn't jealous. God doesn't need worship. The creator of all should be... First of all, anybody who demands worship is not worthy of it. Your God demands worship he is not worthy of. Now, what do you say to me? You're like, Jared needs a prayer. So now you're going to pray to the demon because I say he's a demon. It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> 
Ah, makes a lot of sense. Uh, Timothy Robillard says, I admit it's a good point. Good point, Jaron. Don't forget that Noah's Ark, mass genocide, of course. So who's the good seed guy that had a shooting at his own church of God? Who's that good? Don't know what that means. Uh, be good or bad is about morals, not faith. Yes, be good person. I do believe you will be judged for that. Yeah. Uh, but not judged. Well, I believe that this whole earth is a test. We're being tested. And one of the biggest tests, and I don't even know sometimes if I'm supposed to tell you. Maybe you're supposed to figure it out on your own or not figure it out. Why am I giving you the answers to the test? The answer is, that's not God. It's that simple. Turn your back to it. There's no reason to think that you're going to be given any kind of reward for calling that God. And if it is God, why would you want to? I will happily sit in hell and burn in flames for all eternity in, 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 instead of paying homage or worship to the demon. And I think that you will, that's the answer to the test. I just gave it to you. But some of you can't do it. Some of you are like, no, I got to worship that demon. Nope. I, I believe in the God of the Old Testament that is the Jews' God. You do realize that's the God of the Jews, right? You believe that that's, that's the Jews' God, their father, Satan, or sorry, Jehovah. Do you understand that? And they sent Christians over here to spread the word of their God. You have fallen victim to worshiping the God of the Jews. He's evil. He's wicked. He is racist. He chose the Jews. <laughs> Those are his chosen people. How do you worship a God who chose the Jews? What's wrong with you? It's actually embarrassing to me that you would ever ever not see the flaw in your logic there. Ah, uh, boy. Society of Jesus is the most evil gang on this earth. They sit at the top of the pyramid. Bankers belong to the gang and not vice versa. Well, I just say it. The U.S. politicians belong to this gang, just like the JFK. The whole, the whole government that we have now is the mafia. They are the gang. Yep. Uh, I think this is a test is to avoid the soul trap. Catholicism is based on fear of a deity. What? Yeah, I guess so. I would say that. Um, yeah, they tell you not to read the Bible. I mean, not tell you, but it's not encouraged. It's never. I never was told to like, read it. But there's a reason for that, just because you might not worship him. Every time I check out Jaron, I hear the ignorance and go away for a year or two. Ignorance, oh well. Later, Bill. Get the fuck out. Again, it's not ignorance that you worship a demon. It's not ignorant that you worship a demon. That's ignorant on your part. That's disgusting. Your heart is wicked and disgusting. It's like someone took a shit in your chest and called it a heart. That's what it's like. So my lifetime of observations has led me to believe the earth is the creator of our world and any other worlds may exist that exist on earth. Doesn't sound like a free will God. Well, no. What do you mean by free will? Imagine if I told you, you have a free choice. Either give me your wallet or I shoot you in the face. Would you be like, Jaron's a nice guy, man. He gives us free will. That's true. Jaron does give us free will. He tells me I can give him my wallet or he'll shoot me in the face. Well, I have choices. It's free will. That's not free will. That's not free will. That is a forced choice to give me your wallet. That's what it is. Uh, you have fallen victim to deceit. Me? How? How is that possible? God will never let his creations burn or be destroyed if he is good. So he's not good. I just told you. I just showed you where God is not good. Do you understand that? Do you understand? I just showed you. Jaron, you will not burn. Well, I'm not afraid of that. But God, the creator, will never lose you. Okay, the creator, right. If you're talking about the creator God, but the creator God, just so you know, is not in the Bible. Okay, he's not, he's not there. He's not written about. Denise, why would you call him a bad seed? Discrimination upon another man is not good thing. He's not even calling you out. He's just saying to be open-minded. I'm just saying, accept me for my beliefs. Accept, and it should be, it should make more sense to accept me than me to accept you. For me to accept you, I have to accept somebody I think is evil and wicked. For you to accept me, I'm saying God hasn't killed anybody. I'm saying don't do disgusting things. Don't sacrifice. Don't blood altars. Don't drip blood on the east side of the seven times and things. That's what I'm saying. But yet I'm the bad guy. For saying God never killed anybody, they're like, how dare you? God killed millions. In the Bible itself, the devil kills zero people. God kills millions. Do you think that God wrote that book? Think about it. Hmm, God's going to write in the book, I killed millions, and Satan, who's the evil, wicked one, killed zero. <laughs> do you not see what's going on here? I do. Are Muslims worshiping a demon? Absolutely, 100%. I'm talking about the true creator. The true creator is different. You're right, absolutely. Where's the love at then? Where's the love at? 
then? I don't know what you're talking You have the free will, now obey me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, think about it. Give me your wallet or I shoot you in the face and people are like, hey, at least we have free will. You have a choice, Jaren. God gave you a choice. You can either follow his word for word or you can burn for eternity. Which one do you choose, Jaren? It's free will. Uh, that's not called free will. That's called forced coercion. That's against the law. It's like basically bribery or extortion, really. Uh, and their pope sits at the throne of the snake. Absolutely. The evil, evil men. Uh, and they know this. They know who they worship. They know who their father is. It's you guys that are lost. It's you guys who don't realize you're worshiping and paying homage and giving devotion to a demon. Uh, oh, sorry. I didn't know who you're talking about. It was Joel Osteen. He is a very bad man. Well, those guys are all prosperity. They, they don't even, they would never read to you what I just did. They hide that from you. They tell you the good things about the Bible. And no, God said, do this. And, and the great things, and but they don't tell you this stuff. They don't go through the, oh, this is what you should do with a dove, break its neck and drip it on the altar. No Catholic will tell you that. I went to church every Sunday for the first 15 years of my life. I was a great Catholic child and never once heard any of these verses. It was always, oh, the second reading to Timothy and, and great days when we are all God's children. You know, it's, of course, they have to give you like some bullshit. Jaron worships Jaron. Well, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Uh, Yahweh, worst psychopath ever, pro-slavery, pro-genocide, and most high, his people. And not most high. His people? Jays. Uh, the law killed. By the way, when this show's over, it's going to be pulled and put on uh, Rock Finger Seal. He went all Vince McMahon with the shot comment. And what's popular is rarely true, and what is true is rarely popular. Very true. Just tried three times. Bible bumping is just as bad as globe pushing. Yeah, it's it's worshiping the wrong thing. And we're going to get into it because I'm going to actually say that some of us worship flat earth and we shouldn't. Some of us have put that above anything else. And wherever you put your devotion, it will eat you alive. Wherever you put your, your focus will eventually come back to destroy you unless you put that focus inside you. That's how you make sure it doesn't consume you. Now, it can. You can become an egotistical person and be a, a narcissist or something. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about we'll get into it. Let's get into it. Anything else anybody's saying? People avoid thinking like it's the plague. Well, they just say, oh, Jaron's a, you know, something's wrong with Jaron. I, I come here every once in two years and just hear ignorance. Yeah, ignorant to point out that your God is a demon. Do you understand that you've been brainwashed by a demon? You should. Actually, Satan did kill Job's servants and animals, although it's not explicitly stated. Stand corrected, Joshua, thank you. If So Satan maybe, I mean, Satan maybe killed five then, right? Five to millions. People avoid thinking like it. And then what's crazy is that the opening book of the Bible has God. <laughs> he's so pissed at the people that are there because they now know the difference between good and evil. This is what happened. God didn't want you to know the difference between good and evil. As soon as the Eve ate the apple and you knew the difference, God got pissed to so get out of the garden. Now you know the difference. I can't have this. It, it That's not a God worthy of worship. And then Satan came along and said, what did God say that you die if you ate that apple? You won't die. You'll just know the difference between good and evil. That, so Satan told the truth, and God said, on that day you will surely die. And they ate it and they didn't die. So you've got God lying to people and Satan telling the truth, and you can't realize what's going on? Don't know. Uh, don't know. Um, focus on the love. Yeah, focus on the love, but you don't need the Bible for that. Nobody, The Bible doesn't even talk about love. The Bible is demented. It's not telling you, it's not... Now, if you want to say the New Testament, maybe, but no, I'm not talking about anything Paul said. Paul never met Jesus, and yet tries to change things Jesus said. Says you're not about the law, you're about something else. So is there hell or people perish? I never understand how there are two things after death. Yeah, I don't, there's no hell. No. Well, I guess they might be metaphorically speaking, because I think hell translates wrong in the Bible. It actually translates to uh, death or grave. So, you know, basically saying you will be in the grave. So my personal opinion, and I think I've said it before, is that there is another dimension after this for those who pass the test. There is rebirth here. If you had something happen or there was some reason why you couldn't actually complete what you were supposed to get done here. And then I think if you're a terrible person, then you uh, cease to exist forever. Your your persona, your, your uh, soul ceases. And then I think that that's a fair thing. You know, now you're talking, it's not a lifelong of torment. It's not forever eternity of torment. It's that you lived and died and that's it. And I think that the elite of this world are choosing that by design. They've decided for whatever reason that they would rather 
live lavishly with prostitutes and Jeffrey Epstein's crew out on the island. They would rather live like that and then kiss the rest of, and then go to sleep forever. So that they can do that. They can choose that. Uh, it's their choice. It's free will, right? They've chosen that. Now, they probably know that there's no hell. They're not going to burn forever, but they just will cease to exist. And they've chosen that. And they can do that if they want. You can choose that if you want. But I think that though, now I don't think that if you, well, I don't know. I can't say that. I'm not sure how bad of it is. If I was God and there was a bunch of people down on earth that all worshiped a demon and believed that I wrote the book that tells about the demon stories of killing the firstborn of Egyptians and killing old men for pulling sticks on a Sunday and killing little children because they disobey their parents with rocks, throw rocks at them. I would consider that pretty bad. I would never look at that person and be like, well, you know, they thought it was me, so they loved me. Uh, no, they thought you were that demon. Oh, yeah, that's true. I've never killed anybody. I'm the creator. I'm all good. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, so I don't think that you'd be rewarded for that. I really don't. Um, 1 Corinthians. In Adam, all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 1 Timothy 2. God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. I don't know what that means. Please, here's the thing about Bible verses. Why not, if you're going to quote Bible verses, then let me quote Ezekiel, because you do realize that the Bible doesn't say any verse is more important than another, right? So if you can vote Bible verses, then so can I. And we will say uh, Ezekiel chapter 23. Let me just put this in the chat, because it's very important that you guys get this. Um, where is it? Uh, where are we at here? Where is it? Isn't it twenty three twenty? Oh, there we go. But she increased her prostitution, recalling the days of her youth when she had served as a prostitute in the land of Egypt. She lusted after the lechers of Egypt, whose members are like those of donkeys, whose thrusts are like those of stallions. So just quote that from now on. It's very important that God told us that the guys she used to sleep with had big dicks and thrusted like horses. It's very important. God wants you to understand things clearly. Okay, and this girl, her ex-boyfriends were fucking hung. Thank you, God, for telling us that. I needed to know that. Uh, but again, again, I know that God didn't write this book. God had no, nothing to do with the book other than, hold on, we are all inspired by God. We are all God incarnate, really. We're all God, uh, peace of God. Again, I'm not saying we're all God. God is in everybody. We are one person. So we're a tiny little drop. So you'd be like, you saying, Jaron thinks he's the ocean. No, I said, I'm a drop of water. No, but you said you're the same as the ocean. Yes, the drop of water is the same as the ocean. I'm not the ocean. Do you get that? They don't get it. Uh, oh, I was going to look something up right now. What did you, oh yeah, let's just read again. This was my start to the whole thing. Romans 13 is the all the proof that you need. That's it. After you read Romans 13, you can no longer believe God wrote the Bible. It says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. Okay, think about what that means. Now, Christians have come up with every excuse for this. Oh, Jaron is talking about a time in the past. Uh, he was talking to us. Then it would say that. It would say to you now or to... No, it's... Why would this be scripture then? Why would God want us to see that he says that all government is placed there by God? To go against the government is to go against God. That means if you didn't wear a mask, if you didn't get a vaccine then you win against God. You have put condemnation on yourself. Now, none of you believe that, but you're going to give me shit about not believing the Bible. None of you believe this. Not one of you. That's how fucked up you all are. Not one of you believes it, but you're going to pretend like you're Christians and I have a problem because I don't believe the Bible. Unbelievable. It says, there is no authority except that which God has established. That means Hitler, Mao Zedong, you name it, George Bush, Barack Obama, Biden, they've all been placed there by God. He established them. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those will bring judgment on themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, this was written by the fucking government. Wake up. Who else would tell you that the government is placed there by God? Don't come at me and say shit when you believe this, but you don't act on it. What do you, did God place the governments in place? Is God responsible for all the atrocities that all the governments in this world have caused? No. That's people. 
So who would write in the Bible? Mm -hmm. uh, God placed all government in charge. And if you go against the government, you go against God. Clearly the government wrote it. How stupid are you? Pretty stupid. Obviously pretty stupid. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right. Now that's so true. I mean, how could the Bible be considered? Everything in the Bible is true, Jaron. It's all fact. None of it can be refute, re refuted. Oh, yeah? That it says here, for rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Right? The government's there to take care of the bad guys only. Do you want to be free from fear of one authority, of the one in authority? Then do what is right and you will be commended. That's what your guys' problem is. You're not doing what's right. The government will love you then. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. Hello, McFly. McFly, is anyone home? For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. So Joe Biden's there for my good. Gavin Newsom, the fucking demon piece of shit, is there for my good. Get the fuck out. That's been written by governments. You're not that stupid, but obviously you are. You got Bill coming in here, be like, oh, every time I come in here, Jaron's talking to shit and he's uh, ignorant. He's saying that the government isn't placed there by God. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. No, of course not. No. They are now tracking us with everything we are doing. Do you understand that? They have now got control of this world so tight, and your book says that God put them there to do the work of God. Think about it. Think about it. What God are they talking about then? Think about it. Oh, now all of a sudden it makes a little more sense, doesn't it? See my point? See my point. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for the rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities. Oh, God definitely said that. You guys are right. Where do I sign up to worship this God? He says it's necessary for me to submit to the authorities. That's what my God wants for me. I mean, think about P brain and think about all these guys that are going to make videos about this and say that I'm wrong. Oh, we got over. I mean, think of how tiny your testicles must be. Think of how sucked up your fucking penis is in your gut that you can't say there's a problem here. No, but dude, we got to worship that God, Jaron. We got to, because if not, we're going to burn us. Burn me, bitch. Burn me. Not only because of possible punishment, but as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes. Look at this. Look at this. This is why you pay taxes. For the authorities are God's servants. Get the fuck out of here. Who give their full time to governing. Oh, Gavin Newsom. He has millions, of, but he gives his full time to governing. And therefore, that's why I pay taxes. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, if respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. This is written by government. Hello, McFly. McFly. This is written by the government, not your God. Wake up. The book is written by man. You are not this stupid. But I might be wrong. You might be this stupid. Think about what that's saying. If Joe Biden tomorrow goes on TV and says, there's now a 99% sales tax, I don't want to hear one of you Christians saying a fucking word. Don't say a fucking word. This says right here, if you owe taxes, pay taxes. That's what it says. It doesn't say unless some asshole tells you to pay a lot. It doesn't say unless there's a tyrant in charge. If God wrote this book, it would say that. It would not say all government is placed there by God. What do you mean? What about evil governments? Oh, no, that's uh, God did that too. What about ones that are holding people down and, and are tyrants and jail people for... For no reason. No, that's uh, they've been put there by God to go against them. Is to go. None of you believe this, but you're going to argue with me about the Bible being true. Get out. Get the fuck out. It's disgusting. Let no debt remain outstanding except a continued debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. It's still written by government. You might be mistaken. You might say, but Jaron, that sounds very good. That's what the government wants from you. They want you to obey everything they say to do, to believe that they're placed there by God, and to love one of each other. Don't murder. You shall not steal. Just sit in your houses and be slaves and make money for us, the great and powerful leaders who are placed here by God. You better pay your taxes. Do you understand that this is pushed? This 
book is written by and for governments. It's a control mechanism, and you can't see it, and it's embarrassing, and it frustrates me to no end because it's so obvious. It's so obvious. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. This is great. What, what night is nearly over? What? It's been 2,000 years. The day is almost here. Let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently, as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Just worship government and pay your taxes. Do you understand? That's all we want you to do. Worship government. Give them respect and adoration and pay your taxes. Um, let's see here. So whatever you believe about these things, keep it from... Uh, I just think there's one other thing I want to show you. Wherever the... I don't know where it is in Romans. There's another part where it's talking about the... Oh, wait, I think it's in Romans 12, maybe. Let me go to 12. Let's see if it's there. Uh, let every... God, it's just so bad. Um... Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer bodies as a living... I thought that there's in here somewhere... Anyway, it does say somewhere that slaves should obey their masters for for the sake of it. Just obey your masters. Like, why wouldn't God write, there shouldn't be slaves? Do you understand? But why would the creator of the world, who wrote a book, talk about what slaves should do to their masters? Do you understand that that's authorizing slavery? Just like if I'm to read that story about Jephepaphath, it's telling people, and here's what scares me. We know that there's people who sacrifice children and they get riches on earth. The book tells us that God's doing that. How do you not see this? He gave a guy 20 cities in exchange for his burnt offering of his daughter that God knew was going to be his daughter. It's not like it was a surprise to God. The creator knows all. So when the guy said, hey, I'll make you a deal, Give me those 20 cities, and I'll give you the first thing that comes out the door I'll sacrifice to you. God knew right then, <laughs> it's going to be your daughter, bitch. Where do I worship him? Where do I sign up? I got to sign up for this. It's disgusting. Um, let me see. Uh, I think I can find it. Let's search my little thing here, and we get... Uh, I thought it was in Romans. Ephesians 6.5? Ephesians is what? I thought, no, it's New Testament? I guess maybe that is Ephesians. Or is that Old Testament? I don't even know. I should know that. Read full chapter. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is your first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy a long life on earth. How nice. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. And if they're bad, stone them to death. Oh, I added that part. Sorry. Slaves, obey your earthly masters. What? with respect and fear and with the sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. I wonder who wrote this. Let's think about it. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with the sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. How could you believe that God had anything to do with this book? God would say, you're all my children. Not one of you may keep another as a slave. Period. End of story. Shorted, short verse. Nope. Nope. Not this is God, definitely. Obey them not only to win their favor with the eyes on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. That's definitely what God said. God told the slaves to pretend they were serving the Lord and not people. Because you know that the Lord will reward each one of you for whatever good they do, whatever they are, slave or free. Do you, how are you? How can you not see who this is written by? And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both your master and yours in heaven, wait, that he who is both their master and yours in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. There's no favoritism with God? He's got a chosen people. He's got a chosen people that he's giving the land of milk and honey. But there's no favoritism in the Lord. These are contradictions, folks. These are contradictions. 
another contradiction that I just saw was uh, it says that, oh man, I can't remember what it was. Uh, it says God doesn't do something and then he clearly he does it over and over again. I'll think of it in a second. Where are we at here? For our struggle is not against the flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil. Now, look at this right here. We know that this has been changed, okay? It says that, you know, the, the spiritual... Uh, wait, did I pass it? Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against the flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities. So if you go to uh, the Geneva Bible, I believe is which one we're looking for. So we're going to go Geneva Bible, uh, Ephesians 6. I just want to show you what that was changed. Now remember, the, the Geneva Bible was before King James. Okay, It's the first Bible. Uh, how do you know if this is, wait, Geneva Bible. Okay, so yeah, 1599 and... If we find that same spot, it's Ephesians 6, what? Uh, can I just do the whole chapter? Sorry, my screen, I know you can't see, but I've got a broken monitor, uh, and I cannot see above right here, so I don't know where it is that says book list. Oh, let's just go here and make it 6-1. That'll work. Okay. Um, let's see. So we have here. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the assault of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the worldly governors, the princes of darkness of this world. I wonder who took that out of the Bible. Huh. So somebody put in that all governments are placed there by God, and somebody took out the part that says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, and against the worldly governors, the princes of darkness of this world. That is George Bush. That is Barack Obama. That is Donald Trump. That is Mao Zedong. Do you understand? They took it out of the Bible. Oh, woe is he that takes anything out of the No, they're not. Woe is he. There's still people here that are telling me I'm wrong for not believing it. It's disgusting. Disgusting. Oh, boy. Uh, all right, let's go back to the... I don't want to read any more of the Bible. It's just so frustrating. And it wouldn't even be that frustrating if we could just say it and then everybody go, clearly... That's a demon. Clearly not written by God. All right, let's move on. Nope. There's people that are so entrenched in it. They devote so much worship to it that they no longer can see straight. They think, I have a problem because I don't worship the demon they do. I never will. Never, ever, ever, ever will I pay homage, bow in adoration, give any kind of love or worship to evil, wicked nonsense. Ever. And I feel so good saying that, and I feel disgusted that anybody would have a problem with it. Everyone should cheer me on and be like, good job, Jaron. Yeah, don't promote anything bad. Don't promote blood sacrifice. Do not promote human sacrifice in exchange for cities. Do not promote all government is placed there by God to go against the government. Then what about everybody who didn't wear a mask? Everybody who didn't get a vaccine? You went against God. You will be held in contempt. You will go down in, in flames because you went against God. You don't even believe that but you're going to give me shit. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Um, I don't know which, what, why, why, would, why has it gotten you so good? Because, I mean, it got me too. I mean, look, I grew up in it. But the second that my wife and I said, let's take, we had to pray to God, God, please give us a year to look outside the Bible to see if you're true. If you are real, we will come back to you. And so, yeah, we became atheists for six months, and then I found the flat earth, and guess what? I came back. So it actually, my prayer was technically answered, but I was able to learn that the Bible is not God. God's not in the Bible. Now, what are people's stories why they think the Bible is true? Because wind blew and opened to a certain page and showed them something that they were thinking at the time or something. Okay. So do you realize that the, even the book says that the angel of God, mas I'm sorry, the, that Satan masquerades as an angel of light. Or something like that. So what that means is that Satan can pretend like he's a good angel. So when somebody tells you, hey, go kill your son. Hey, let's make a deal to where you can give me that and I'll give you this. You can have worldly riches. Give me that sacrifice. Do we recognize that maybe it's not God? But your problem is you think God wrote a book. 
even though that would never happen. God is smart, <laughs> smarter than everybody combined. Not so dumb. They'd be like, I'm going to write a book. And here's what you want to hear. Who's real dumb? Muslims. What do Muslims believe? Muslims believe that God came back years later and went to Muhammad, said, stop effing that little girl for a second so we can talk. And then said, I'm going to give you a new Bible because the other one's been corrupted. That's what they believe. They believe the Quran was given by God to Muhammad because God said that the Bible was corrupted. So what did he do to change? Nothing. It's, he wrote another book. How do you believe that? Why, why would you worship an entity that saw the problems that happened from people incorrectly believing a corrupted Bible and came back and said, I'll give you another book to read. Here's another book. Okay. And I mean, think about the people. I mean, it doesn't even make sense that people came over to the United States in 1492, if you believe that. Like, none of those people had even ever heard of Jesus or God. God thought that was an effective way to get his word out. Yeah, go down there, Jesus, die for their sins. Tell them it's the end's near and you're going to write. But then in 1,500 years, the people over there will finally find out. Just, we don't need to tell them right now. Give them 1,500 years. And then the Catholics came over here and they said, and this is why you're all believers, just so you know. I hope you understand that your great-great-grandparents were told if they didn't believe in Jesus Christ, if they didn't profess him as, profess him as God, that they would be killed, murdered. It's free will, though, right? So you are a product of threatened, coercion belief. And for whatever reason, your soul sold on it. For me, as soon as I read the Bible, I knew it was done. As soon as I read it, as soon as I started reading it, Genesis chapter 3, you'll get to a place where you're like, wait a second, what's going on? Do you know God wrestled some guy and lost? He lost. He couldn't beat him. Rolled around with him, wrestling, couldn't beat him. God. God couldn't beat him. People are like, yeah, that book's written by God. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. That really makes a lot of sense. Um, let's go back over here. All right. Do not be, if you're a slave, get out. Slavery is not okay. You cannot own another person. Okay. And yet people are like, no, I believe we can. We can own whoever we want. All right. All right. All right. Believe that if you want. Let's go back to the chat. Is everybody losing their mind? Probably. Keep being awesome and bold. Jaren, Timothy, J E R A N. But I appreciate that. Thank you. You're making a huge difference for the career. I don't know about that. And it's pretty hard to make a difference. Children has inherited property and can make them slaves for life, but you must not rule over your fellow Israelites ruthlessly. <laughs> I hope you're pointing out the disgustingness of that, not that it's something good. Where is all where is all the Christian forgiveness? Well, that's Jesus. Jesus came and said forgive, but not God, but the same person. Just don't eat the apple. Who is benefiting from riches here? Now we have a F.E. Bible being written to by whom believers, for whom believers, those who tell you to stop believing. Who is benefiting from riches here? Now we have a F.E. Bible. Who, who's writing an F.E. Bible? Written, being written to. I didn't even know there was a Bible being written. I can't have a different opinion or try to explain mine. If you only want the same views, that's cool. Wait, what? I can't have a different opinion. Or See, I don't know if you're talking to me. If you're talking to me, please put at Jaron so I know. Because otherwise, I'm gonna I'm gonna start yelling at people, and they're not even talking to me. That'd be rude. The Earth lays like flat, like a carpet. The Quran, yes, and nobody should be surprised that the Bible is a flat Earth book and that the Quran's a flat Earth book, because nobody in their fucking right mind would ever think you're living on a spinning ball in space. It's that simple. So anybody who tells me, oh, the Bible's not a flat Earth, yes, it is a flat Earth book. The people are not idiots. They wrote what they saw. That's what they wrote. They, they didn't get words from God to write. Uh or the translation of the records of what was taking place. The original scripts were written 50 to 80 years after they took place. Yeah, that's a really rough time to write. I mean, imagine if you had to write right now a story about what happened in 1920 or 1940. How would that be accurate at all? It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. Um, easy. He saved my soul and gave me a home in heaven. Who gave you a home in heaven? Now, Ken and Carol, here's what you need to recognize. You did that. You are giving away your greatness. Think of the power that you have, that you got yourself off drugs. You cleaned yourself up, and you're giving that away to a demon. You, you did it. One time my wife's mom called us. She's like, oh, my God. Oh, thank Jesus. I just got done. I, oh, if it wasn't for Jesus, I would have never. I screened a screen door myself, and if it wasn't for Jesus, I would never finish. She's like, what is wrong with you? Jesus did not help you screen a fucking screen door. 
Or like my wife's father who said that Jesus helped him name his orphanage, which he never even built, <clears throat> but he had a name for it. And then we found out he cheated on Mrs. Mom 20 times. So it's kind of funny that Jesus came to him and told him what the name, but Jesus never came to me. I haven't cheated on my wife. So what, why don't I get Jesus come to me? He didn't give me any information. Guess you got to cheat on your wife 20 times in order to get Jesus to talk to you. Um, I wish the masses don't believe the apocalypse was inevitable. Oh, it's so disgusting that everything that happens, they're like, oh, it's the end times. It's Great. This has been by design every single time. That's how the elite get one over on you. They've been telling the story since the 1500s. At least that's as far back as I would even venture to say is anywhere near reality. But they've been telling you that the end times is here. It's the end times. It's the end times. It's the end times. And people are like, no, no, but Jaron, it means it this time because it says it'll be like the days of Noah. What? It's always like the days of Noah. There's always wars and rumors of wars. And, you know, I've already told you the story. Uh, Self-love is new age BS, LOL. It is not. Again, you are falling for a trap. You are, God is in you. That's the only thing you should be loving. And you're out there loving a book written by men about governments being there for God. Give me a break. Thank you very much, Joan. Appreciate that. The Geneva Bible relies significantly upon Tyndale. Making a lot of sense, Jaron, scaring me a bit, actually. I don't mean to be scaring you. It's not scary. It's actually freeing. I've never felt more free than the day I shed that and realized I don't have to support a demon. I don't have to love what's evil. I don't need to make excuses. That's all Christians do is make excuses for the disgusting things that are in the Bible. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Don't make excuses of anything. Just go, you know what? I'm just going to believe it. You know, don't make excuse. You're making excuses, but you don't even know that God did those things. You're making excuses to me why God definitely killed children. But I don't even believe that that happened ever. And I'm the one who's blasphemous. Oh, that's blasphemy, Jaron. Think of how funny that is. I'm saying God never killed anybody, and I'm blaspheming. You say God killed little babies, and you're holy. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Jesus said we are gods twice. There you go. Knowing that makes sense of many biblical events. It does. And I think we, here's the thing. People always ask me, do you believe in Satan? Do you think Satan exists? No, I don't believe in Satan because I know I have the power to quench his existence. Do you understand? That if I did believe in Satan, he probably does exist. But I have the power. There's no demons in my life. There's no Satan in my life because I don't believe he exists. Do you understand? So you have that much power, but you're allowing people to convince you that Satan is out there trying to deceive you, and you're giving power to that, what do you call it? A talisman. What do you call a... Um, an egregore, you know, you have created the devil. The devil doesn't exist. He's not anywhere right now. But if you go in your garage and paint a pentagram and light candles and read the Bible backwards, he will show up in your garage. Okay. But he doesn't exist to me. So starting to think Christians are low key liberals. You don't agree with my beliefs. So I'm going to insult yours. Temper tantrums. I swear. Yeah, it's pretty. Um, and I get it. I get it that I'm attacking. And I have to do this because if I do it nicely, then they're not getting it. And I get it. I know I'm going to get hate for it. I know that because nobody's ever changed their mind in a conversation like this. But I know that I'm planting seeds, and the next time they read the Bible, they'll start to notice, why do I worship that? And you'll realize, if God came and told you that he wrote the Bible, please tell me that. Please tell me, because God did not tell me. He failed to tell me. And it would be very important for me to know that God wrote the Bible, because my only way to discern whether he did or didn't is to read the Bible and see if it correctly describes the creator of me who gave me my morality. It does not. And then what do Christians tell me? Oh, you're not allowed to judge God. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? You mean God gave me morals and said, here's your morals. You have to live by these. I can go do whatever I want, and you can't question me. Well, where do we draw the line? Now you're worshiping no matter what? Think of how disgusting that is. That is that's not right. It's not right. Do you think a child should stay with their parents and respect them if the parents go off and do things like kill babies and things like that? I don't. I don't. I think that the child should have every right to be like, no, I don't agree with what my parents are doing. And I would like to be raised by my grandparents or something. I've, and we would all think that. Just think about what you are. You are a, you are adhering to everything God says because you're afraid of him. If we take that and put it on a husband and wife and the husband tells the wife, you're not allowed to worship other men. You're not allowed to talk to other men. You have to follow my rules exactly, or I'm going to burn you in hell forever. 
we recognize that is not love. But when it comes to the Bible and God, you say that is love. It's love and worship, and it's your, it's your God. But we know that in the husband and wife, we know that the woman doesn't love the guy, and the guy doesn't love the woman. He could not love the woman and treat her like that. And we know that she can't love him. She's just afraid of him. So why don't we just transfer that and say, oh, that makes sense. God can't be the guy in the Bible because he's threatening people to, to worship him. Anybody that demands worship is not worthy of it. We're, now, have I worshiped a girl before? Absolutely. Have I been worshipped before? Absolutely. Is there a problem with that? Well, is that person giving you, in return, something equal of worship? Again, I don't think that God is. Again, if somebody is giving you something worthy of worship, but they're also killing babies, don't worship that person. It's that simple. If that person's being a good person, and they're great to you, and they treat you really well, well, if you want to put your devotion and energy into that person, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem with putting your devotion and energy into things that have no return. So we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about everything that we give our devotion to and why they make no sense and why they leave you empty at the end of the day. So we're about to go uh, into depth here, and I'm going to be asking for change. I'm going to ask you guys to change your ways a little bit. I mean, our worship or our devotion takes tons of different uh, tons of different faces, tons of different uh, avenues. You know, there's lots of different ways that we can, everybody's vying for your devotion, right? Everybody wants you to be devoted to them. Everybody wants you to worship them. Everybody wants you to shop at their store. Everybody wants you to use their coupon. You name it. It's all about this uh, forcing us because it's always forcing us outside of ourselves. Um, what's going on here with this? Oh, oh, good. All right. Wait. Okay. Uh, they want, and I've talked about this before that they want, excuse me. All right. Okay. So they, we've talked about this before. They pull you in every direction, every single direction that's possible because they don't want you to look within. This is why they keep you busy. This is why they keep you entertained. This is why they have the news. Because think about it. When you're watching the news, are you doing any introspective work? No. You're watching somebody describe events that were happened over there. Oh, today over there, things happened and things happened and things happened. And you sit there and you're like, oh, those things happened over there. I can't believe. But what are you not doing? You're not looking at yourself. You're not spending time with your soul. You're not improving your life. You are absolutely destroying yourself by watching the news, okay? What about when you watch sports? We're going to get into that. We're going to get all this stuff. Think about it. None of those things give you any return. They are meant to distract you. It's even worse than that. I've realized now that in order to defeat like the government or things like that, we would need all of our best athletes, right? All of our best warriors. So what do they do? They take all of our best athletes and warriors and they put them on sports teams, they pay them millions of dollars. Now, when you're a college athlete and you're 18, 19, 20, and you come out of college and you get picked up with the NBA and you get a $40 million contract, what's the first thing you have to do? You have to go buy a house. Now, you know you're going to be on the road for half the year. What do you have to do then to keep your house? Well, you better get married. Now you have a wife who's going to stay home by herself. Nope, you better have some kids. So now our warriors have wives and kids. Do Will they ever go against the government? They have money. They have a wife. They have children. No. So they've effectively taken our warriors away. Nobody will ever go against the government now. This is the problem we're in now. This is not in 1776 when this that didn't happen. There was nobody getting paid millions of dollars to play games. So our best warriors could come over and fight against the British. We could have wars where we actually... Now there's nobody to fight. Who's going to fight? Our 18-year-old kids are going to fight in, in a war against the government? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. They did it on purpose. This is why these things exist. This is why they're paid so much money. If they weren't paid a lot of money, they would say, fuck it, I'm going to go and defeat this government. Right now, there's nobody who's going to go against government. Nobody. And I am one of them. I mean, like uh, somebody was asking me, Jeremy, why don't you go to Antarctica? And I was like, no. They started giving me a hard time. Like, what a puss you are. You don't want to go to Antarctica. You might, because just because you might. I'm like, look, it, I have a family. It's not okay for me just to take off and leave my wife and son and go to Antarctica on a, on a trip where I might not come back. Now, I get that that's a problem, and I get that I fell for that trick, but so did everybody else, right? And I didn't even have millions of dollars to protect. I just uh, got married. So anyway, 
let's continue. So what does worship mean? We were getting to that part. So people think that it's like hymns or giving alms or like donations or whatever, but forget that watching TV, watching sports, uh, worship is simply where we put our attention, right? So my point this whole talk is to do not ever externally worship anything. And yeah, did I just say you can worship a person? Well, the chances that that person is really worthy of it and not asking for it is very rare. But if that happens, sure, go ahead. But they want you looking outside yourself, uh, news, TV, sports. Uh, what you should worship is inner peace. Okay, what I mean by that is you want, if you are happy with yourself, meaning that you are uh, fit, you are healthy, you are happy, you're no longer watching the news, you're no longer watching TV, you're making good decisions, you're of sound mind, you're no longer drinking, you're no longer smoking, you know, all these things that are vices. When you get rid of those because you worked on yourself, you were worshiping your inner peace, then you can go out and change the world. Until then, you have yourself to worry about. And again, you're going to have people in the chat like, oh, worshiping yourself is such new age. No, it's not. It's the most important step that there is. And that's why they don't talk about it. Why would you think? We already know that if the government tells you to do something, you shouldn't do it, right? So when did the government tell you to ever look inside yourself and to find your truth? No, they don't tell you that because that's where the truth is. Do you understand? So they point, this is why there's fights and arguments and elections and you have Trump and Biden and Biden's stupid and Trump is going to be arrested. And that's all meant to take you away from here. It's so simple to see. So in the pursuit of happiness, which you, we all are on, everybody's trying to get happy, right? We always are chasing after that external success, whatever it is, possession, money, fame, power, believing um, uh, that, that will get us ultimate fulfillment, but we've all realized, have you all realized that none of it ever does? I've noticed it. Nothing ever does. Right. So if we ask that question of who do we worship and why, I think too often we place our faith in these entities. Think about celebrities. They want you to worship Lady Gaga We're, and they don't care if you're busy saying Lady Gaga had a satanic. Thank you very much. Show we got, uh, Dillweed. Nice. New subscriber. So. If if they if we're talking about the satanic Super Bowl and we're talking about sports being fixed and we're talking about all do you understand that we have completely robbed ourselves of anything important? Okay. Now I'm going to say something controversial here. That I believe that we are letting flat earth become that. We are putting all of our devotion and faith into flat earth, but what is the end result? So if you already know the earth's flat like I do, we are done. Think we need to start then improving our lives and helping our heart and our soul. We can't just keep looking for the next proof because think about where does that end? Let's say we get to the end and we do find the ultimate proof and the earth is flat. Now what? Well, we're going to have to go and work on ourselves. So why not start that now? What, what, why would we be so like flat earth is the, is the thing that's going to bring us happiness? Well, no, it should already bring you a connection to the creator. It should remind you that they lie about everything. And that, that's it. That's all there is in Flat Earth. I feel some people are now worshiping Flat Earth. Some people worship the Mandela effect. If you put your effort, all your day's effort into that, do you realize that that now is consuming you? You're not working on yourself. You're not improving yourself. You're simply worried about where's the next Mandela effect. But let's, where is the end of that? Where do you uncover the final Mandela effect that changes the world? It's, you're not going to find it. It's not there. And think of all the things I could say on top of that, right? You worship video games, you worship computers, you worship golf, you worship, I mean, you name it. There's always going to be this emptiness. And why is the emptiness there? Because we were made to recognize God in ourselves. And if you're taken outside, got to go golf, got to go to work, got to go vacation, got to do this, you're never finding God. You're just leaving God alone inside your body with no love, with no appreciation. So anyway, the source of true happiness is never in the outside world ever. Okay. It's within ourselves. So you have to recognize that you are a divine spark. You are a piece of the creator and it resides in each and every person. And you should treat other people like that. And it lies in acknowledging that God is not some distant figure in heaven in a cloud. Do you understand why they do this? 
Why is God in heaven? Why is God in the clouds? So he's away from you. So you got to look for God. God, I'm going to pray to you, God. God, please do me this and that. No, 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 no. God is in you. You don't pray to God. Here, I want to go crazy. Now, again, this is where people will give, oh, Jaron, you're... Here's the crazy thing. You judge yourself. There is no God who is watching your life and in the end of your life will sit you down in a chair and be like, let's go through these things. Jaron, you masturbated when you were uh, 16 years old. Again, when you were 16. Again, when you were 16. Again, when you were 16. 16 again, there, Jaron. 16 again, Jaron. That's never going to happen. It's, it's ludicrous. And people don't recognize like how, think of the disgusting things you've done in your life sexual thing like do you really think you're going to stand in front of god and he's going to be like hey, why did you do this why did you eat that girl's ass Jaren? why did you lick her asshole i don't understand what, you know poop comes out of there right yeah yeah i'm a little i got it yeah, yeah yeah that's never going to happen okay you will judge yourself now what do i mean by that well you are not this body you are in the sky i don't know where you're at you are elsewhere whatever you want to say that thoughts come from and in the end, you're going to face yourself. And only you know whether you've passed the test here. And I, you can't even lie to yourself. You even saying, like, can I lie to myself? As soon as you say that, you basically admitted you didn't pass the test here. So all my life, or at least recently, is about making up for things that I've done in the past. Have I done anything terrible? No. Have I done some, you know, I mean, it depends on what you think is terrible. Have I slept with married women? Yes. So those are things, this is why I do things like help couples. Okay. I help couples because I know that I've ruined relationships. So what I'm trying to do throughout my days is to make amends for mistakes I made in the past. And I believe that on the day I die, if I face myself, I want to be able to say I cleaned up all my things that I did in the past. And that's how you come to a, f a fullness of yourself. If you ignore things that you've done or pretend they didn't happen or ignore, like, I don't think anybody actually thinks they will face God on their final day. I don't think anybody thinks that. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think that. Like, there's a there's a guy. Is it a guy? That's I mean, that's completely bullshit. <laughs> there's not a guy who's going to sit in a chair and be like, "All right, imagine being God and knowing eight billion or a hundred billion people have been on Earth." I heard, and then you know everybody's every sin. Like, what? That's miserable. <laughs> Why would you want to imagine if you were granted you get to be God and they're like, "You're like what? I get to be God? Yep." And the very first thing you have to do is judge everybody, here's all their sins. Oh, Jesus. I mean, think about the things you'd be seeing. Oh, my God. You, okay, wait a second. Oh, boy, this is disgusting. Oh, man. God doesn't see that. God doesn't want to see you masturbate. God doesn't know you masturbated. It's ridiculous. The thought of it is just, a, it's ridiculous that we've ever been sold on this idea. Again, people always say, Jaron, your mom's in heaven looking down on you. No, she's not. No, she's not looking down on me. Or she saw how I put my wife to, to bed earlier. And I really doubt that she wanted to watch that. So you can't have somebody in heaven who's like, nah, I'm going to watch my son. Hi, Jaron. How am I? How's it going? Oh, geez. He's going to F his wife. Okay. I got to turn my head. No. What if you got, what if you were married to the love of your life and then you died at like 50 years old, you go to heaven and you find out your husband remarried. Now you got to watch him and some new chick. You don't want to do that. So there is, so heaven is not what you think it is. I believe there's another dimension. There's a, and I, here's what I just personally believe in based on what I've read with Gnostic stuff and things that I do think that this is the life here where you don't remember your previous lives. But everyone who passes this test, because there is no rules here, there is no... Now, you might think that the Bibles are rules. I'm talking about reality. That there is no rules. So if you can navigate this life, be a good person, do what I said, be able to amend, make amends for the things you've done wrong, then I believe that you are given the gift of the next life. Now you remember your past lives. So imagine in the next dimension are only people who pass this life they didn't. Were they weren't good because they were afraid of God. They were good because good is right. Do you understand? If I was God and I wanted to give people a bunch of rules, or something, I would never give rules because rules hide inept and 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 evil people. If I told everybody, "Hey, you only get to get this prize if you don't kill people," great. So now everybody doesn't kill people, but there's people down there that want to kill people. So just because they didn't because they want a prize, does that make them good? No. So. God tests us by not giving us the rules. He didn't tell you how to act. He's inside you. He's, he's leading you. He's um, propelling you. He's the reason that you can breathe at night. And yet, people think for some reason that they 
that this God would be happy with them for, you know, for, I don't know, debauchery thing, a bunch of things. It's disgusting. Anyway, let me continue or else I'm never going to get done with this video. Um, so like I said, God is not a distant figure. He doesn't exist outside of us. He dwells in our very being. And if you place your faith in external pursuits, oh, yeah, I'm going to get to heaven because God gave me the rules. Think about that. It's ridiculous. God does not want people in heaven who followed his rules because they were afraid he would kill them or burn them in hell. That's not good people. That's scared people. God wants to promote and advance good people, not those that are scared. There is no love and fear. Um, but if you pursue women, possessions, money, fame, church, uh, or a God made or a God made of human hands in a book or power, then you become slaves to the whims of this world. And Jesus said, you're not of this world. Okay. So you find yourself in a trap of endless desires because you're looking outside yourself, always seeking the next big thing. I think truthers are this way. Truthers are like, I recognize you will never find the truth. I say that people get so upset. You will never find the truth. It's not something you can find. Okay. It's, you'll never know that you found the truth. I've said it before. Imagine that I became president. And they're like, Jaron, you become president. And we open the safe and here's the real history of the United States. We can never know that that's the truth. Maybe somebody's trying to fool me. Maybe they put a fake history in there. Do you understand? So you will never know the truth. Stop looking for that end goal of the truth. What you want to do is get closer to peace within yourself. That's what you want. I've found that with the flat earth. I now can fly and not be afraid of flying in a plane. I now understand that the world is created by God. It is special. It is magical. It is great. The sun is amazing. The moon is amazing. They're signs of creation. I don't care what the fuck they are. I don't care what the distance is. I don't care what, you know, that men say they've been there when I know that they haven't. I don't care. And I feel like we put too much emphasis. We put too much on that. But there, we have to look at what is the end goal? What, what happens when we find out that we didn't go to the moon? Okay, now we found out. So just take that as understanding that government lies. Government's not placed there by God. Government isn't only there to do the good. They're there to lie to you constantly into submission or into adherence to their rules. It's obvious. So don't do that. Don't fall for that. We're at a terrible spot now, though. I really do. I'm, I'm stuck on this one of whether do I keep trying to stop this freight train from coming down the tracks or do I camp out to the left and just say, you know, I'm just going to let the freight train go right through and I'm going to live my life right here with my wife. Because I really do think that uh, it's not a smart idea to go up against, you know, a hammer, somebody with a hammer against me with my fists. It's probably not a smart move, right? Now, if you had 20 of us against the hammer, we can win. But right now, I'm not sure we have 20. I'm not sure we have the men to do it. They have totally, and by the way, tomorrow night, uh, Rose and I are doing a show where we're going to talk about relationships because she thought it was interesting that I was talking about how I think that the feminization of men has been the downfall of society. It's all they needed to do. They don't need to touch women. They don't need to do anything. They just need to feminize men with atrazine, with you name it, beer. And then what happens is you've got men who are no longer capable of, and again, it's not even their fault because they didn't see it coming. It's unfair. Fluoride. I mean, oh man, the other day I saw a fluoride, finally a, a city council passed five to nothing to get rid of fluoride out of their drinking water. And the reasons that they gave, they said, well, we looked into it and fluoride, you can't buy it. Nowhere is fluoride available because you need to have a prescription. You need to have a permission from a doctor. So everybody is drinking fluoride, but you can't buy it. Wait a second. What? What else do we all drink that we can't buy? So it was great that they said that. I agree, fluoride, because it's made everybody dumb. It's made everybody docile. Whatever they're spraying in the air has made us all sick. And it's a testament to the human body that we are still here and in such power and still alive, that we can beat the evil ones even when they spray nanoparticles and bullshit in the air. Um, so you don't want to be become slaves to the whims of the world. And that's what every... If I used to be a big sports fan, Giants fan, biggest Giants fan ever. Uh, the World Series, I mean, I went to these games, like, what was I getting out of that? I was spending money and I was paying adoration and devotion and worship to a bunch of guys in jerseys playing a game. 
Now, can I enjoy the game? Sure. I still enjoy the game. I think it's a fun game to watch. I think it's a fun game to play. And yet, I don't need to put devotion into it and worship into it like I did. Ever. Ever again. Never. What a waste of time. What a waste of my of my mind, of my brain. It's terrible. So that's becoming a slave to the whims of the world. You will forever chase after fleeting pleasures, right? Like I always wanted, to, my whole entire life, is the Giants have never won a World Series. The Giants have never won a World Series. 2010, they won the World Series. Finally. 2012, they won the World Series. Finally. 2014, they won the World Series. All right, we've got three. But I was never happy. I was never like, finally, it's a, no, it's like, well, why are we doing good in 2015? How come we suck in 2016? Why don't they trade for this guy in 2017? So it was just a never end. It's a soul trap. It's a, it's a devotion trap. And they want your money. And it, you know, takes our athletes and puts them in houses with wives and kids and they'll never do anything. So you're going to find yourself in a endless desire trap, always seeking whatever the next big thing is, right? Whatever the next accomplishment is, whatever the next validation is, whatever the next proof of the flat earth is, all in a futile attempt to fill that void that's there because you're not finding God within yourself. So the true fulfillment of that will never become, they'll never come from external riches. So like, I feel like I'm at peace with myself now that I know what I want as far as the future. I just want money to buy a house and that's it. I don't want fancy cars. I don't want fancy clothes. I don't want uh, an external thing. I want a place that I can call a house where I don't have to worry about money anymore. Right now, I got to worry about where my money's coming for next month. Where's the money going to come for the month after that? Just one day I want to be able to say, oh, it's got this place. We can live here. We can go out and walk dogs. We can look at the clouds. We can go swimming. We can just enjoy life and not be so uh, always trying to get that next fulfillment. I don't need that anymore. I want peace and inner peace. And I'm getting closer and closer to that. But I'll never get there if I'm looking for external glory or external happiness. I'm looking for internal happiness, which will come with a house. So if you have a house and you want to donate it, send me the deed. Uh, P.O. Box 3044, Merced, California, 95344. Anyway, um, you need to cultivate self-awareness. That's number one. And self-love. And again, you're going to have people out there who say loving yourself is is new age bullshit. Yeah, of course you're going to say that because you're following the government. You're following the mainstream belief. That is what everybody believes. Right? That's what they all are told. So, I'm not impressed that you're just coming, oh, that's a, why? What's wrong with self-love? Do you realize that there's a reason why they tell you when you're on an airplane to put your mask on first before the child's? Because you cannot help a child if you cannot help yourself. Make sure you can breathe, then the child can breathe. Okay? It's the same thing. Take care of yourself, then you can take that joy and bring it to the world. Do not try and correct other people and not get the joy to you. Okay, so ask yourselves, who do you worship? Think about your week and tell me where do you put your, if you had to separate, okay, so you have seven days and in each day, let's separate into three boxes. And if those seven days you had to write in each of those boxes, where you put your focus, what would it look like? Do it as an exercise. Draw seven boxes and in each box, draw three, you know, two lines to make three boxes. And say in the morning, I put my effort towards truth. In the afternoon, I put my effort towards doctor. In the, in the night, I put my effort toward TV and go through your whole week and look at what you give your devotion and energy to and how much of it is spent on yourself. How much is spent on yourself? I'll just say this right now. And again, may, may, may people might say, no, I'd never do that. I don't know what you're talking about. So and I, I'm going to say something. That nobody's going to believe me either, but I don't care. It's the truth. So there's a guy. I've only had one person sign up for my personal male personal growth uh, consultation. Just one guy is the only one who signed up for it. And I begged him to do a review. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll do a review. I'll just do an anonymous one. I'm like, dude, you cannot do an anonymous review. I said, people will think I wrote it. I said, I need you to, to be able to help. He won't do it. So I do want, if anybody would be willing to give a review for that consultation, an hour consultation, if you don't mind using your name and actually being speaking and, you know, or make a video where it's your face. Again, you'd have to tell people you came to a personal growth consultation. But thank you very much for your dream house. Thank you very much. J Dreamers. What a good guy. Uh, good message. Thank you. J Dreamers. Check out his channel. Awesome. Um, so 
I do think I have tools to help men. I think I can help women too, but I think men is more of a, of a, you know, more of my alley. But if you're interested in that, let me tell you what this guy did. I, he paid a hundred bucks for an hour long consultation. Great. We talked, he told me some things. I can't give much detail, but I'll just say that he was confused about expectations. And what I'm good at is taking a bunch of information and kind of breaking, just like I did with those three boxes, breaking it down to, okay, let's, to correct these things, you could do these three things. And they may be small, right? They're small things that you can work on every day that will take you 45 minutes. And sometimes you just need that person to tell you to do those things because you just don't really know how to do it yourself or you're, you don't know how to uh, take that list and look at it and say, what, what are the three most important things that'll correct what I'm doing? And basically what you could do if you want to do it yourself is write down the 10 things that you think you need work on, personal things, and then go through and say, out of those 10, what are the top three? And then out of the top three, pick the one and do something every day to correct that. And you'll be shocked in a week how much better you feel. It's just like everything else, right? When I first got into the truth movement, and I had Dave Weiss telling me I need to get a water distiller and I need to stop eating processed foods and I need to eat fruits and vegetables and I need to not eat anything with ingredients. And it all seemed so overwhelming. It was hard to get started. But it started because Dave Weiss for Christmas, whatever that would have been six years ago, bought me the Mega Homes water distiller. So it was like 280 bucks. I would have never bought that for myself. But as soon as I got it, started drinking distilled water, all of a sudden I felt better. All of a sudden I quit smoking. And then things just start tumbling where all of a sudden, you know what? I'm not going to do fluoride anymore. Now I make my own toothpaste. Got rid of deodorant. Got rid of shampoo. Got rid of soap. Everything that I knew was wicked and evil and disgusting and man-made and meant for uh, poison. Not drinking alcohol. Not drinking caffeine. Now, those things have been, they all started with one thing. So I recognize that getting people onto that right track by saying, do this. So anyway, I gave this guy a list of like four or five things to work on. He has three times, and this was about eight months ago, three times sent me $200 tips. So I've now made $700 off of an hour consultation. And I keep telling him, what are you doing this for? He's like, dude, my life has changed. My life has changed because you corrected my thinking and put me on a track. And he's like, now I'm like getting girlfriends and I'm happy. And so that's what I mean by I'm doing those things because that helps me correct for things I've done in the past. I, whoops, see, that corrects things for me. I feel like that is what you're supposed to do. Make amends. Did I do some bad things? Sure. Am I doing some good things? I think so. Yeah, I think so. So if you don't know, you can go to my website, shop.jarenism.com and sign up for a consultation. And if you are somebody who will give a review in your person, then I'll give you your money back as an exchange for you just giving an honest review. You, you basically get a, a free consultation um, for just an exchange for a consultation. Because I don't think anybody's going to sign up if they all just think it's me talking. So I need people to actually say, no, he did help me. No, it, it wasn't uh, beneficial to me. So anyway, shop.jarenism.com, go to consultations, and then you just sign up for a consultation, and then you tell it in the notes. Because I do several things, whether it's streaming, whether it's crypto, whether it's video making, whether it's conspiracy talk, or whether it's male personal growth. And I've got couples that pretty much one couple is broken up and they needed to, but the other ones are all on the men's. And it's because I just do simple things. You know, Oh, do you guys still text each other? Do you flirt? No, not anymore. We have, you know, okay. You need to flirt with each other. You need to be the same that you were when you got together. You cannot think that you can just survive on the past or something. So by giving couples like clear direction, like, Hey, play this game twice a week. Okay. Play this game, do this chore, text each other every day, something you know flirty. Um, and all of a sudden, they can start to get that back. It all can come back. You can fall in love with your wife again. You can fall in love with your husband again. But you have to take steps to make that. You cannot let the relationship fall further away because then it gets harder and harder. The further it falls away, the harder it is to get it back. So start now. Start today. If you feel like your relationship is drifting, if you feel like you're getting further apart, recognize that that will not correct itself. You need to take action. Okay. Let's continue before we get too far. So if you're placing your faith in external things and it's leaving you empty within, which it should because it does everybody, then you need to remember that true happiness is never going to come from the world outside. It can only be found 
by worshiping God inside yourself. Okay? Here are things people worship, and they there's no reason they should. Money. Money will never bring you happiness in a fullness sense. Now, if you're talking about, like and I said, like I would love $200,000 because I could buy a house and be done, that's different. You know, that can, can, kind of can buy you happiness. But if you're always seeking money and you're always, I want, then you'll never be happy. You'll get a million dollars and you'll want two. You'll get two and you'll want six. You'll get six, you'll want 10. Think of Donald Trump. He's not happy. He wants more money. Everybody wants more. So nobody's like, oh, I got to 10 million. Now I'm happy because money, the love of money is the root of all evil. There you go, right? So it will, you'll chase it forever. Don't do that. Power, same thing. If you worship power, you'll never be, you'll never be at the height of power. You will never be there. So you'll always be seeking the next external uh, power trip, if you will. Uh, any material possessions. Doesn't matter how many Teslas you have. Doesn't matter anything. It, do not define your worth by actual possessions. You'll never be happy. Think about it. Have, you've always wanted something in your life, and then when you got it, you wanted something else. So it's like you're we're addicted to that want, not to the actual item. You like that feeling of, man, I want that item. I want that item. Everybody's got that item. I got a new iPhone. I want it. I want it. Then you get it and we are like, all right, I got this new iPhone. I pro- now what's the next iPhone? 16. I can't wait till that one comes out. So you're not going to find it there. Now, I would say don't worship yourself if it means vanity, insecurity, that kind of thing. I'm talking more like, um, again, inner peace, finding the truth of yourself, what really makes you happy, what makes you click, what makes you healthy, what makes you active and helpful to people around you. So I I could see where that's a little confusing because you're like, oh, you said don't worship yourself. Well, it's not worship. It's more paying devotion and attention to that. Now, that is the same definition as w- worship. So again, it sounds funny because I don't mean like worship yourself. That almost sounds like a narcissistic trait. But um, relationships, be careful. A lot of people put all of their devotion into a relationship. And then when that relationship goes away, they're empty. They don't have anything. They have uh, it's it, they have now a codependency that when it's gone, they feel like they're just, I'm a wreck. I, there's nothing. I can do nothing. So you want to make sure that you um, only are doing that in a relationship. And again, if you're getting it back, if that person is deserving of that, which would probably mean that they're probably not going to leave you if you think about it, right? Uh, sports. Again, I've already talked about that. Don't do that. Technology. People are all worshiping technology now. It's getting scary. Um, I want to get away from it. I think that I don't want anything to do with the internet anymore. Unfortunately, it's what I do to get by and I have no choice, but uh, certainly I do not seek greatness and I don't want to become the best video editor. No, nothing like that. I have no desire to um, do anything other than make enough money to get by to the next month. Uh, Flat Earth, told you about that one. Uh, God, we've already talked about that. Christianity, talked about that. So, like I said, worship inner peace, worship contentment. If you worship that, it can lead to fulfillment, okay? It can lead to happiness. It can help you maintain balance, uh, stasis. It can reduce stress. It can um, help you appreciate the moment, which is all that there is, right? So external hopes, oh, I hope I have enough money. You're always looking at the future. You're, I hope I have enough money. I hope I do this in the future. I hope I get this job. I hope that my team wins the championship next year. So you're always like, it's like a carrot in front of a of, of a rabbit. Is that how the saying goes? Yeah. So, you know, if it's the carrot that you just are always chasing because it's always in the future and you're not the only thing that exists, the only thing that exists despite seeing back in time and you know, bullshit, the only thing that exists is right now. As soon as it's in the past, it's gone. It's gone. Maybe it exists if somebody took a picture, this video exists. So you could say, well, that, yeah, but it's gone. Yeah, we have rememberings of it or, you know, video of it. But only thing, that, and, and tomorrow it will come, but it's not here yet. So if we always worry about that, we're never enjoying right now. Right now is all that matters. Right now is all that counts. Right now is all that exists. Okay. Um, it can improve your mental health. It can improve your well being. It can improve your stress level, like I said. And it will make you a better person, make you a better man, make you a better woman make you a better lover, make you a better husband and wife, make you a better mother, make you a better father, make you a better grandmother and grandfather, make you a better friend, make you a better neighbor. That all comes from starting within. You'll never be a better neighbor because you're looking out there. You'll never be another neighbor because you're worshiping sports or TV. You will be a worse father, a worse wife, a worse mother because you're worshiping anything other than what's inside you. Again, 
Worshiping what's inside you will make you a better neighbor, will make you a better person, will make you a better friend. Because once you can help other people by saying, oh, if you think, you know, now you're helping other people look within themselves and get better. So why not God, Jaron? Why wouldn't you worship God? Well, because God doesn't want worship, okay? If he does want worship, he's not God. The, the idea of God is God is fulfilled, has fulfilled everything. He's, he is the definition of fulfillment. So why would you then say, oh, God needs my worship? No, he doesn't. Doesn't even care. God does no care for your worship at all, at all. And so when you hear God's jealous, well, that's not God. How could God be jealous? Then he's not God. So your God in your Bible says, I am a jealous God. What are you jealous of? Then that means there's other gods exist. Because otherwise, you're God. How could you be jealous? Oh, because you're worshiping other gods. Yeah, exactly. I thought you said there's no other gods. How could you be so mad at the Egyptians for worshiping another god if that god doesn't exist? Jealous? That's not God. God's not jealous. Anyway, um, the problem with worshiping God is God has never told you a damn thing. God has never said, here I am, here's what I do, here's what I don't do. You're taking the words of men, and the, those words have to be interpreted and translated, and you are definitely worshiping the words of men, without a doubt. Even if you believe, oh, God inspired them, but who wrote it? Men. Are men fallible? Yes. Therefore, could they have made mistakes? Well, no, because God made No, God cannot make sure anybody does anything. That is not free will. God cannot force you to do something on earth. That's not how any of this works. Think about it. You can do anything you want right now. You could go grab a knife and kill somebody in your house right now if you wanted to. You could do that. It's not smart. Don't do it. But I'm saying you can do anything that you want. Okay, so God does not ever stop people. from. God does not reach his hand in and save babies from running out in traffic. That would be ridiculous. That would mean that God, then why didn't he save the other baby? If God saved any baby, why didn't he save my niece when she died at five years old of a heart, of a asthma attack? Right? So it's very easy to get around that idea by saying God does not interject in the activities of humans. Okay? God is the probably the all-encompassing reason that we're here, and plus God is in each of us. So if anybody saves a child or stops something from happening, or this is why women can lift up cars in a moment of, of despair, they are God. God lifted up the car. But that is you. You are the one acting on that, right? It's just like I always say, you cannot pray for somebody else to have their free will taken, but you can always pray for your own free will to be changed. God, please give me the strength to be strong tomorrow. But you are praying to, imp to yourself to be strong. That's okay. You're not taking away, you're, you're actually invoking free will, not interrupting somebody else's. You cannot say, God, please let that girl like me. No. God cannot help somebody like you. You can look inside yourself, change who you are, and then she likes you because of who you change to. But God cannot help that, except for helping you. Um, so there's interpretation differences. We don't want to listen to men tell us what God meant. I've heard priests and, and pastors say different things on different subjects because it's words on paper. Words on paper don't mean anything. This is why whenever you have conversations about the globe or when you have conversations about the Bible— that it becomes this thing over semantics. What do you mean by that? What is refraction? Is it, it's because it's words. And words don't, they, they, they're meant to convey something, but do they in them of themselves absolutely convey that? No. Think of the Bible. It, you could take it many ways. So would God ever write something as his authoritative word that can be taken in different, that you have to go to a, people always tell me, oh, Jaron, you don't know, you need to study, you need to go talk to a pastor. Oh, so I got to go to another man to tell me who God is. Even though he wrote the book for me, you, you think he wrote the book for me, but I need to go to another man to tell me what the book says? It makes no sense. It makes no sense that you believe that. Um, you need to question your beliefs, especially because we're all given beliefs from birth, meaning that you, you're raised in a family that has a certain belief that no matter what you do, you will adopt. Now, many of us have bucked that. Many of us have gotten away from that, but many people haven't. Many people who are Christians grew up Christian. I always remember Rob Skiba told me that when I was talking about this stuff and trying to get him to realize, he said, Jaron, I will never believe that the Bible isn't written by God because if I do, then my whole life has been a waste. And I felt bad for that because I'm like, okay, well, do whatever you want, but the Bible isn't written by God. <laughs> so 
again, if you choose, if you're making a cognizant choice of, I would rather believe in the demon, I would rather worship the demon than to have to reassess my entire life. But guess what? We are the ones who should be doing it. We took the globe and we kicked it in the balls. We saw that it was wrong. We got over the fact that we were lied to. We got over the truth, of, you know, or got over the lie that we thought was true. And we're better because of it. The same thing happens with the Bible. It's no different. It's the same thing. You were indoctrinated into a belief. I don't know anybody who like came to God late in life that wasn't religious. Now, sometimes you'll find those people. What are they? They're people that are in the in the prisons. Why is that? It's because there's one religion out there that tells you that you aren't responsible for your sins. Everybody's wicked and evil, and Jesus died for you. Think about what a terrible, terrible shit doctrine that is. Jesus came and died for your sins, so now you can do whatever you want? Do you realize that the reason priests are pedophiles, some, is because they are told, number one, that we're all wicked and evil. We all have evil thoughts in our mind. But these priests have given their life for God, so they feel like, we're all wicked and evil, so I touched that little boy. You know what? I, Jesus will recognize that I worked for him. I'm a priest. So it's the religion's fault. The religion is the one causing people. This is what people, Jaron, why do people in prison all find Jesus? Because there's a religion that says that it doesn't matter what you did, you can just ask for forgiveness and go to heaven. So I wonder if they found that. I wonder why they found their religion. I wonder why they found Christianity. Uh, what if Christianity said, you need to make amends for your fucking sins, like I feel? then you wouldn't have people falling for Christianity in prison. They don't want to make amends. They want to go, I believe in Jesus now. Give me my trip to heaven, please. So people get triggered too much when you talk about God for many reasons, though. It's your, it's, if it's become your identity, that's a problem. You are a person. You are not your religion. You are Jane. You are not a Christian. Do you understand? You have ne- you've like shunned your actual ego which again is a terrible thing to th- people are told like oh ego is terrible no it's not what are you talking about ego is is you you are yourself that's you why why would god want a bunch of drones then he wouldn't have made us all separate he wouldn't make us each individual if he wanted you to be just like the other christians think about it people don't think um people have an emotional attachment obviously to to god and the religion um People are afraid of doubt. Their fear of doubt scares them. They're afraid of social influence and, and social and cultural. If they were a Christian, now what are people going to think of them? There's the cognitive, dis- cognitive dissonance, of course, which is when you're confronted with conflicting ideas and you adopt them both, really. Um, so I understand that it upsets people, and I don't mean to upset. It's not like I go into it like, I'm going to upset Christians today. I want people to at least say, I understand why Jaron doesn't believe in the Bible. That's all I ask. But we, I don't get that. I get people say, oh, Jaron's delusional. What do you, well, stop. I'm delusional because I've laid out a case against the creator in that Bible and said, that's not the creator. It's not a God. If it is a God, then there's lesser gods. There's like little minions or something. I don't know. Um, why is taking care of yourself important? We're almost done, I promise. Is because if you... Have self-care, okay? It enables you to be your very best. So if you're a little fat, if you're a little slow, if you're dirty, take care of yourself. Prioritize yourself, and then you'll feel better in the day. And nobody would disagree with that. You know those days where you wake up, you take a shower, maybe you got a haircut, maybe you're clean. You feel better. Why is that? We should definitely notice that and then get into that uh, routine, if you will. Um, it allows you to recharge, to rejuvenate, right? You, you have like this new, it's like being reborn, maintaining your physical, mental. Now I'm not somebody who says you have to be a bodybuilder. I'm not somebody who says you need to work out every day for two hours. Take a two mile walk every day, get up, move around, uh, get your heart pumping, do some jumping jacks, anything. I believe that our bodies, if you tax them too hard, there's a reason why sprinters don't live a long time. There's a reason why bodybuilders don't live a long time. It's because your body is only given so much rege- regenerative juice. And if you constantly are pushing your body to the edge, you're stressing your body. Now, you may look like a, a big muscle man, but you've pushed your body too hard, too much. So when you get to be 70 or 80 and you have a sickness, your body can't handle it. 
I believe that if you want to live a long life, you'd want to take steps today to feel better tomorrow. What can I do to feel better tomorrow? I'm going to get a better night's sleep tonight, and I'm going to eat good today. Wow, tomorrow I feel better. How do I feel better the next day? Continue eating what I'm eating, drink better, get rid of this problem, get rid of this headache, and before you know it, you are, and that's what I believe you do. And you know what? People who are 105 all have the same story. They had a routine. They weren't runners. They didn't work out every day. The most recent one I saw is some guy who says he had a Dr. Pepper every day. Your body can learn to process things. Uh, I'm not certain that's you know, that you can't, your body's amazing, but it needs to be on a regular where it gets used to doing something and it's just part of its routine. Clean it out every day, do this. So get, get into that. Do not be like making your body do all kinds of different things. I'm going to try this and now I'm going to go keto and now I'm going to go this and now I'm going to do a workout and now I'm going to run and now I'm going to hike. And okay, you're just stressing your body out and your body only has so much in it. And I believe those people go earlier. Um, but if you prioritize yourself first, then it's basically like you're establishing boundaries to where you won't go. I mean, I've never been healthier than I am right now, almost below 200 pounds. So I still got about four to go, but it's because I've set boundaries. We don't eat dairy anymore. We don't eat processed foods. It's two meals a day, not three anymore. All those are little steps that make me feel better today than I felt better yesterday than I felt the day before. So you're actually setting boundaries to where it's a healthy balance between what your body needs and the time that it's, you know, again, could I do sit-ups all day? Sure. What good is that going to do? Right. It's not going to, in fact, I'll be hurting tomorrow. So you want to prevent burnout. You don't want to go so hard that you crash. You want to get good night's sleeps, wake up, uh, reduce your, I mean, eating three times a day is taught to us. It's not, you don't need it. You don't need it. You probably need one time a day at the most, but get down to two. Change your eating to, oh, I usually eat breakfast at eight and lunch at noon. No, no. Eat breakfast at 10 and dinner at four. You'd be surprised how easy that is. And by leading by example, think of how your children will look at you. Think of how your friends will look at you, your family. All of a sudden, you are actually rubbing off. Again, you're not going to get them. If they see you being a great sports fan, they're not going to be like, oh, I'm going to change my life and be a sports fan too. No, but if they see you eating well, being healthy, being happy, being positive, that'll rub off, whether you know it or not. It will. And you'll also become more compassionate. You'll be more helpful, more empathetic. All those things happen with that. Um, you want to be fully present in your interactions with your children, with your parents. With I, I hate more than anything that I thought I had 30 years left with my mom, more than anything. And, you know, it's one of those cliches where people go, oh, I do anything for, I do anything for one more day because it's unexpected. So just cult, if I was a little further along, I would be more um, present with her. And it was because I always thought I had 30, you know, 30, it's kind of, I think we are with our, with our spouses is that you're like, Oh, I'm with this person forever. I don't need to take steps today to tell how much I love them because I'm with them forever. But I disagree with that. You do need to take steps every day because you need to, um, show them that you like, and, and by doing that, they're going to give it back to you. They're going to show you the same thing. It'd be very hard to show somebody how much you love them every day and them just not respond. It just doesn't really happen. But what does happen is both people stop doing that and they drift apart. Okay. Um, it gives you more self-discovery, more uh, inner, you know, inner work. It helps you shed demons or shed trauma, if you will, where many people have trauma from the past that they Hey, what do we got? Hey, 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 super chat. Hey, I appreciate you talking about this. I resonate with most of what you're saying, especially about the Bible. Thank you. All right, Liz, the Iron Maiden. Thank you. I always see you in all the chats. So I just think that we are need to focus on ourselves first and not on the externals. That's basically the 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 moral of it. Is there's nothing outside you that's going to bring you happiness. There's nothing outside you that's going to make you a better person. It's only when you look inside. Now, don't get me wrong. Once you have taken care of the inside, then you can start to go outside and find happiness there. But it's because you're already happy. So then you'll enjoy going to this place. You'll enjoy going to the park. But you'll never enjoy that if you're not happy with yourself. So why is it that I believe that a healthy ego is important? Well, you need to have self-confidence. And this is why I think guys should you know, take a consultation with me. I will teach you how to recognize things in yourself that you're doing well. And it's okay to be confident about those things and want to improve them 
and want to, that's what our goal should be. We should be working on ourselves. I don't understand why I say that. And people are like, oh, self-love, oh, that's demonic. No, it's not. Loving big pharma, loving work, loving sports, that's satanic. That's not helpful to you. But self-love is helpful to you and everybody around you. And that's why it's demonized and called, oh, this is new age bullshit. New age bullshit by taking care of yourself, you, you fall in for another trap. It also gives you motivation. If you aren't egotistical, you have no motivation for anything. Why would you have motivation if it doesn't matter? Looking at self is, is, is just uh, selfish. No, it's not. You want that ego because it can serve as a like a driving force that motivates you to set goals, to be better, pursue success, be a better parent, be a better mom, be a better husband. That's what it does. Personal growth and achievement. And it can happen overnight, literally. Literally, you could think of something tonight that you want to start working on. It's the worst thing that you're at. And tomorrow, take one step at correcting that. You're not going to correct it. Thank you very much. Miss Vicky May says, oh boy, what does that say? Oh, nothing, I don't think. Thank you very much. Super chat. I appreciate that. Um, you want to take a step tomorrow to correct whatever it is. And everybody's got that one thing. Think right now to yourself, what are you bad at? What do you, what do you struggle at? Okay, think of that item. And now say, what could I do tomorrow to make that a little bit better? And that's all you need to do every day. Every day, maybe make a new list. Okay, I'm not doing this well enough. I can do this tomorrow. And then make that a little... And you know, I believe in lists. I, you, know, uh, you always see me making lists. I have a ton of lists. And here's another thing that I, I have that's a part of lists. We are very happy when we can complete something on a list. For some reason, people love lists. They love check off lists. So what I do when I write my list is I always write something I'm guaranteed to do, right? Guaranteed. So like say I've got to go, I don't know, shopping. Or I got to go buy something or whatever. And on my list, I'll put go to the store to buy this thing. Even it's like, that shouldn't be on your list because you're like, I always have to do that. But when you do it, it's just an item. It's a mental thing. Oh, did that. What else can I do for my list? Oh, I did this. I did that. Make yourself a list. Always condense it. I always call mine the never-ending work list. It's constantly cross out, move items up, cross out, move items up. And as I do that, I just notice things getting done. Things getting done. Rarely will something fall away from you that you were supposed to get done because you're looking at it every day on your list. Again, doesn't mean you have to spend 10 hours on it. Spend 15 minutes, spend 30 minutes. If you're somebody who doesn't move enough, buy a, bu a punching bag and punch it for 15 minutes a day. That will make such a difference in your life. Um, my wife and I probably enjoy our walk more than anything else. Every morning, 8.30, we usually about 9, get Maverick ready, get him dressed. And even if it's freezing cold outside, we go for a walk. We go for a walk. We talk, we laugh, we have some fun, we joke around, Maverick loves it, we play games, we play, look at this, I see a tree, I see, and it's just the best part of the day. I don't think enough people have that moment. Uh, and by the way, I want to say thank you to you guys. I want to say thank you because some of these things that I'm talking about, I would have never been able to do. I would have never been able to enjoy the things I've enjoyed, but you guys allow me to do that. So thank you. And I, and I am grateful for every moment of it, even if... Uh, let's say a month from now, I'm not making enough to do this or whatever. I'm forever grateful of the time that I've been able to spend with my family, with my son, with my wife, uh, with the house, with myself. I've been able to improve myself because of you. And I recognize that. If I was a store manager at CVS, there's no way I would have gone through any of this, any of it, any of it. And so that's where it does make a difference. Does flat earth make a difference in your life? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, it made a difference in my life. Because I was able to shed the false world and embrace the the true. Now, again, does it mean I know what the moon is? Do I do I know what the sun does? No, and I really don't care. That's that's that simple. And again, people might think that that's weird, but just like there's actual psychologists that will tell you, if you have a bad moment in the past, to go back to it and change it in your mind. Now, is that good to do? Well, you you're the only one with that memory. Think of something traumatic that happened to you. You are you are the traumatic, you are the one who's thinking of it as traumatic. Nobody else is there with you. You're the only one who has that memory. So they say change that memory. Well, it's kind of the same thing. You are, if what's important is, you know, don't dwell on the past. That's You can't change it. So 
change it in your mind. And then you change it. Again, that's up to you. Uh, I'm not saying, oh, I killed somebody. I'm just going to pretend I didn't kill them. No, no, don't do that. Um, so you want that sense of identity, of individuality. I don't think God gave us different brains so that we all became the same. I want everybody to read the Bible. I want you all to be Christian. I want you to all to follow and be exactly like I want. God doesn't want that. There's a reason why you're separate from me. There's a reason why you're separate from the person in your house. There's a reason why you have your own soul and ego. And yet people tell you ego is bad. Shed the ego. Shed the ego. Why? To become, oh, then we are all one again. Wait, what? Why would God take one thing, separate it in a bunch of pieces, and then say, now come back to one? This seems kind of pointless to me. Um, I think that there is, I don't know. I, I don't want to... I don't like to ever say that there's a reward on the other end of this because then I feel myself, do, am I doing things for a reward? I don't want to do that. I'm doing things because it's good. I do think that there's a possibility that rewards are on the other end of that, but I'm not doing it for that reason. If I die and my eyes close and that's forever it, that's forever it. That's the end. So I don't mind that. I'm doing what's good because it's good, not because I'm going to get rewards, although I do think that there is something at the end of the uh, the game. Um. But again, don't go too far. Don't become uh, arrogant and selfish where you don't care about other people. I'm never saying look at yourself and shun your family. It's you should be looking at yourself to improve how you are with your family. So don't get that mixed up. Um, and again, I said that I would be willing to help anybody who needs that help. I think that I can encourage positive self-talk where you can do daily affirmations, where you uh, talk to yourself about, I'm going to be better at this, I'm going to do this. And learning to actually compliment yourself uh, celebrate the good, celebrate the positives and also provide you with food. And here's another thing. I don't want to see you more than once. I'm not one of these counselors. I remember going to a counselor when I was a kid, my sister was like stealing things and we went as a family and you could just tell this person just couldn't wait for the thing to end. And they wanted us back the next week and the next week. And it's like, wait, why would this person solve my issue? They don't, they make money off me not solving my issue. So do I make money if you come to a consultation? Absolutely but I don't want you more than once. I want to get you on the right track and then that $100 will be the best $100 you ever spent. You'll never look at it as like, oh, I gave Jaron, you'll look, how did I only give him $100 for that? And I think that's what this guy thinks that has now sent me $200 in, in, in Cash App three times in eight months. So um, I'll promote self-care with you. Try to you know so do this differently, change this, because I get it. It could be overwhelming. Where do I even start? Well, I can help you at least get a track, a, a, a uh, a plan in place. Um, I'll help you set realistic goals. Don't set stupid goals. No, any single guys with a similar mindset as you, I need me a Jaren. You're fantastic. Thanks, Joan. Uh, I don't know. Set realistic goals though. Don't, if you weigh 350, don't say you want to weigh 150. That's going to upset you. Okay. You're not going to weigh 150 tomorrow. If you weigh 350, say you're going to get to 330 and start taking actions to get there. And when you get there, you'll feel so good. You'll be, I'm going to go to 310 and you'll get there. And I'm going to go to 290, and you'll get there. So it's just a realistic goal. Don't go, smaller goals are better. Smaller, manageable steps. That's why I do a never-ending work list with little things, not a big, don't put on your work list, you know, uh, redo house. No, <laughs> start small, clean closet, clean bathroom, clean hallway. And then you feel like you're accomplishing things, and guess what? You are. That's what you're doing. Um, and like I said about boundary setting earlier, you'll establish healthy boundaries where you'll know what not to do, what to do. And it becomes part of a lifestyle. Like I don't drink any other water now because I drink distilled water. It, it's part of my lifestyle. It's, you know, I go to, before I go to bed tonight, I'll go turn on the pot for tomorrow. Um, give yourself opportunities for success. Celebrate those opportunities or celebrate those successes. Uh, you're modeling healthy behavior. You're, you're going to rub off on other people. People are going to see it and you're going to love when they point it out. Are you losing weight? You look skinnier. You look happier. You look healthier. You're going to love that. And it's uh, all with self-esteem and, and confidence building techniques. And that's basically it. Who do you worship? You should worship the God inside you, not anything outside you. Unless that thing outside you is giving you the return. You know, do, do I worship my wife? Yeah, a little bit. But she's also fantastic to me, right? Um so, you know, always be there for me. Always be what I need when I need it. Uh, never stresses me out. Never tries to put me in a weird position. Just always 
loving and friendly. And so, yeah, she gets more worship than probably, you know, most people. But th- it's because it's deserved. And you can call it worship or you can just call it love or whatever. But it's, does she get a high percentage of my devotion? Yes. Is she worthy of that? Yes. Does she deserve it? Yes. So that's the the difference there. Um, all right. It's too late. I'm heading out of here. YouTube won't let me send another super chat. What? <laughs> don't, don't worry about that. Uh, you ask questions, but if it answers don't suit you, just react more like that. I don't know what's going on there. Let me go say thank you to everybody who gave a super chat in Rockfin, if there's any over there. Much thank you guys for supporting the show. All right. 33 people, zero dollars. All right, nice, you guys. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here. Please share the show. If you ever like any of the shows, share them. It's the biggest problem that we have is we're not reaching new people. Uh, everybody here has heard me before. Probably everybody's heard me say almost everything I said tonight. So it's not getting new information, but you can share it. Uh, even if you have to say, this idiot is a flat earther. Listen to him go off about nonsense. I don't even care. That's okay. At least you're sharing it, and there's a chance that that person watches and goes, oh, I kind of like this guy, or I'm going to watch him again. He's an idiot. Either one of those I'll take, um, as I think we need to get this word to more people, and it, feel, it makes me feel better that I'm helping the world. So let's head out of here. I think that that is everything. We're going to listen to the, what, you want the Jaronism song on the way out of here? The Jaron song. And again, Benny said before the show, if uh, he's like, you should have mentioned that Jaron standard time. Let me just point out that the person who wrote this song wrote it in 2014. It was posted on YouTube in 2014. It has nothing to do with me. The person didn't know me. I wasn't on the internet. So it's a jo- song about Jaron, but not me. Um, it's somebody else. Uh, or I'm not sure. There's a Jaron that's like a Neopet character. I don't know who he's talking about in this. Co- but it is funny because he talks about internet followers and things like that. It's kind of funny. Let's see if we is this yeah, I saw this one the other day. I wanted to play this. Stop it. I'm gonna watch this guy dance. I love a little dance to get on out of here. Guys, you've been great. You've been fantastic. Thank you again for allowing me to do what I love doing, and that's talk. <laughs> um I kind of don't shut up. Ask Miss, does Jaron ever shut up? No. No, he does not. Hims does not shut up. All right. Uh I love you guys. Thank you for being here. I know it's been late. I appreciate everything. I'm going to go out, have a little smoke. And that's another thing. So for instance, like one of the things I do is I wait until the, my day is done to smoke. It's like a little carrot at the end of a stick. Sure. Uh, but I know myself. I know that if I smoke during the day, then I just get lethargic and I don't get anything done. But if I smoke at the end of the day, it gives me something to work for. It's a goal. It's a one of the things on my list. And... um Again, it's my only vice, and I don't even know if it's a vice, but I guess it could be considered a vice. All right. Um, only 164 thumbs up. No, sorry. It's okay. I know that what I'm saying is not popular. I know that what I'm saying is uh, different than other people. Other people cater to what their audience wants to hear, and I just talk. I just give you my honest opinion, take it or leave it. I do think eventually down the road you're going to think, Jaron was right. Oh, Jaron was right. That's my own opinion, but it could just be an inflated ego. Could be, I admit that. All right, guys, we will see you, uh, what is today? Sunday night. We have the debate on Wednesday at noon. No, 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 what time is this? Is it noon or four? Let me see. We got, uh, what is today the, what? 19? Oh, I'm like, what? It's Monday. Okay. Uh, It's at 4 p.m. on the 21st. That's what it is. 4 p.m. on the 21st. We've got crypto class on Friday night. If you want to join that, do that for 10 bucks a month. Every two weeks on Friday nights, we have a crypto class with usually a presenter. And uh, you can go to patreon.com slash for that. All right, much love to you guys. I appreciate it. I remind you, please do your own research when you do. You'll never again believe all the bullshit you've been taught. Till next time, this has been Jaronism. Peace. Wrong song. Better. I know this dude named Jaren and he's looking real fine And no, I'm not a homo, but I gotta try to make him mine Cause he holds all of the secrets that the ancients once kept But the way to Jaren's heart is proving you have once leapt From a volcano or a cliff or an airplane into danger Without fear, crying, screaming, waking babies in their mangers He can smell your fear from a thousand miles away And if you try to deceive him, well today's your last day You can bet he doesn't want a coward or a liar coming up to him saying Can you be my friend? Maybe you can man it up and lay down in front of him show him you are strong enough to go out on a limb he's got enough ladies lining up around the block to fill 747's loading number on the clock a lot of men are crying every single day
day, praying for a Jaren day, but they can't afford to parts to pay. All the women want him and all dudes want to be Jaren, but the fact of the matter is there's only one Jaren. He's got an internet following that forms a giant group. He can translate ancient tablets using alphabet soup, which he rarely even does, though it fetches big money. He doesn't even need it because he sweats pure honey. His fans send him gifts, make him gifs, jump off cliffs just for the once in a lifetime honor of seeing Jaren take a sip of his famous oat stew. That's right, he's a stew chef, you may say. What's a stew chef? Well, you've probably never seen a stew chef because there's only one stew chef and it's Jaren cooking it up. He's known for only filling friends and family's cups with his decadent sludge that he boils all night, every night, all night, every night. It's, it's out of sight. He can do a dance that makes everybody pee their beds and make a mess of cause stress. He's on a mission with the Jerry Berry Blitz and the Jerry Berry Twist. He's riling up the world. You can do the Jerry Berry Blitz and the Jerry Berry Twist. You can imitate the best just like the rest. Come on, Jared, show the world what you got now. He's gonna show you his dance. He's gonna show you his skills. His dancing skills. Check him out, y'all. grow with every fight and every fight that he fights he destroys his opponent and leaves a sticky mess on the ground he wages war when provoked and when provoked he starts to smoke out of his butthole and that's when you run away or die cities topple buildings fall mountains melt and rivers stall when jaren says so because he does what he wants when he wants sovereign nations all bow down when jaren comes around they know they can't match his skills yeah they've all heard this song He's lived for thousands of years and caused innumerable tears and broken so many hearts. I just don't know where to start. His flow's unbreakable, swagger unshakable. His style's impeccable and you can't do anything when he competes a pizza prize bowl. Girls want to marry him, but a mate would only slow him down. And besides, you know that he would never, ever share his crown. He's left everyone he's met depressed, torn up and so forlorn. What's scary is you haven't even seen his final form.